Welcome to Parnell Park for the second day of Dublin Senior Football Championship quarter-final action. Coming up very shortly, it's Ballyboden St. Enders against Rahini, of course, Ballyboden St. Enders, the defending champions. And then a little bit later on, we've got a good one for you as well. Nafina uh, in action in that game, and that should be a fairly exciting clash with Ballymun Kickhams. Of course, yesterday St. Jude's overcame Scary's Harps by 117 to 110. Kevin McManaman with an utterly amazing goal in that uh, game. A couple of goals in the other one as well. Five in all, four of them for Kilmacut Croaks, one of them for Vincent's Croaks winning by uh, 415 to 112. The semi final draw, by the way, will be made live here on Dubs TV after the second game today. We'll also make the draw for the Senior B semi finals. With me is former all star Coleman Goggins. Coleman, what are you expecting from today? Yeah, looking forward to a great game. Um, weather conditions a little bit brighter than they were yesterday, I guess. The breeze that probably dominated the proceedings yesterday has died a good bit of anything is blown in the opposite direction. So looking forward to a, a good game. I guess a big challenge for Rahini in respect of the team that they're facing in Ballyboden, who you know, demonstrated last year their strength, reaching an All-Ireland Club semi-final, uh, excuse me, before exiting the competition. But even this year across the Dublin Championship, they've, they've racked up an incredible score of 13.53. They have a real hunger for goals, and I guess the big challenge for Rahini is, from a defensive point of view, are they able to put some defensive line in place that challenges that Ballyboden attack? That's really what they need to do. It'll probably force them to go a little bit more defensive than they possibly would like to do. But for them to have any you know, chance of trying to steal a win, they really need to focus on not conceding goals, because if, if they start to leave them in, they're going to have a real challenge, because they're not posting massive scores themselves at the other end of the field. Rahini warming up, as we can see, back in their traditional maroon jerseys, this afternoon, of course, during the week, they beat Plunkett's wearing the white jersey. Let's have a look at the teams. Well, for Ballyboden St. Enders, Michael Dara McCauley is the standout man beside Declan O'Mahony in midfield. What a pairing those two make. Connell Keeney is still doing it, even though he's into his late 30s at this stage. And, of course, they have a massive goal threat in the shape of Colin Basquell and Ryan Basquell. Shane Clayton from fullback likes to roam forward, but when he needs to, he can mind the house that is quite a balanced 15 that we're looking at there for Ballyboden Coleman yeah like it, it, it's tried and tested for want of a better way of phrasing it I mean very strong spine to the team defensively certainly with Clayton and Robbie McDaid who both have inter-county experience with, with Dublin at underage and senior level and then if you've rightly pulled out in the forward line you're 11 and 14 and the two Pascals have significant scores within them and then a, a real great strong platform in the middle of the park with Macaulay and Declan O'Mahony who seem to be around for, for a very long time and still performing at the highest highest level Let's have a look at the Rahini starting 15. Well, the two names that jump off this team sheet are Brian Fenton and Brian Howard. Is there a better club midfield in the country anywhere, club or county? Well, I, you know, it's certainly the two names are outstanding in terms of their football ability. I'd say from a Rahini point of view, what they'd love to have is, you know, they had a, an old stalwart there in, in Connor Talty who or Brian Talty who would have played. Uh, if they had someone like him in the middle of the field, it would possibly free up Brian Howard to be in a more attacking role. What sometimes happens when you have two, you know, inspirational footballers like that is, Someone has to mind the house and the other guy goes on the attack, which means you're almost taking one away one of your significant threats. And in Brian Howard, he probably plays that more s defensive role, allowing Brian Fenton to attack. So a powerful midfield, but does it ultimately help the team where it might be able to better position Brian Howard? Maybe not, that they could get more out of it if they were able to free him up from that duty in the middle of the field. We saw during the week against Plunkett's, the likes of Darren Byrne and Sean McMahon and even Sean Byrne and Rutherson Real all got forward on mass and they created problems for Plunkett's. They may not be able to do that against Ballyboden, certainly not to the extent that they were doing it during the week. Yeah, well, ultimately what you're trying to do is, is create those lines that challenge the, the any team's other, uh, their defensive line-up or their defensive setup. So when you have attacking wing-backs pushing forward like that, it, it asks questions of the half-back or the, the opposing team's half-forward line. But in, in, you know, Pascal, Darren O'Reilly and Kieran Kennedy, they, they have guys who've been tested at the top level who understand that role as well as the attacking role that they've been asked to do. So... Really, I guess the platform is going to have to come from Fenton and Howard in the middle of the field. They're going to want to push up on Bally Bowden's kick out and not allow them build from the back. And if they can, you know, push out on that kick out, if they can generate a bit of p possession for themselves around the middle third of the field, that's where you could get a bit of action inside with the likes of Gavin Ivory if they can get ball into him early. But it's a strong defensive line that Rahini need to break down if they're going to have an input in this game. Rahini played during the week, and we can look at that a couple of different ways. One is they might be tired, or two they actually have a bit of momentum, whereas Ballyboden have had a, a longer wait. Yeah, I think over the last eight or ten weeks that the championship has uh, played itself out, what has been great for club players is that they've been consistently playing. The big challenge is in, in championship in Dublin traditionally has been a couple of games in April and then this big stop while the inter-county season has taken off and then you come back into a championship setup 
and luckily for Dublin uh, club teams, it's been late September before that's kicked off again because of the, su the success of the inter-county team. But the challenge that class is we have Howard and Rahini coming back into a, a club team who played without them for six months. So what the benefit of playing during the week and obviously all consistently over the last six or eight weeks is you build up an understanding of the movement, the kick pass and the ability that those guys have that are with the inter-county setup. And similarly for Ballyboden, you now have all those guys joined together for eight, ten weeks. So they know how they're going to play. They understand the runs. They start to intuitively kno intuitively know where they need to be for a pass to land and that's where you see much more fluency within their attacking formations and from a defensive setup so absolutely i see it as momentum rather than a drain on them in terms of having another match to play within four or five days today was supposed to be the all ireland senior football final it is likely that dublin would have been there at one stage it looked like we would have nothing at least now we have something maybe there will be inter-county football this year it, uh, it looks likely it could be without fans that's something that is beyond our control it's a debate that isn't for today but what we are glad of is that we do have football we're very sad that you can't be here we're glad to be bringing it to you though but Coleman how important is it that we you know we have games back I think everyone had uh, an itch that needed to be scratched when there was no action of any sport and what the club uh, championship has allowed people to do is and it absolutely uh, even to be here to watching the teams togging out in the stand over from us you know the social distancing that they're having to uh, enact because of obviously what's gone on over the last number of months across the world and no supporters being in here really changes the atmosphere of the game but from you know a, a you know a neutral's point of view but anyone's point of view it's great that we're able to watch guys playing it's great that inter-county footballers have been with their club for the last eight or ten weeks and they're helping those guys develop they're playing with their club week in week out where ultimately it started for them so the fact that there's football, the fact that there's action, the fact that people can sit down, hopefully at home, and tune into this and watch it and get great value out of it I is a huge benefit because it did certainly look at a stage that there would be no football for anyone to talk about. And God knows we love to talk in Ireland about weather and football. Rahini are kind of in bonus territory by being here. I, I don't think that's how they'd put it, but does that take a bit of pressure off them for this game? Yeah, potentially, but then, y you know, you're 60 minutes away from a... a Dublin Club Championship semi-final so there's a huge opportunity for them so you know the pressure may be on Bally Bowden and that they're red hot to come out of this game but Rohini should see it as an opportunity to try and get one over on Bally Bowden as you rightly said they've played within the last you know couple of days so they've a little bit of momentum behind them a, a quick start is what they need and they need to protect against conceding a goal early and if they can get some sort of a foothold well then they have an opportunity within the 60 minutes so it's a bon te bonus territory yes at the start of maybe the group stages you would have probably fancied Castle Knock maybe to come out of the group but they managed to get a great result against them. Their difficulty has been that they're not posting big scores. They're struggling to maybe get goals. Two against Plunkett's is all they've managed in the, the group stages. So when you compare that to Bally Bowden, there's a huge challenge for them to stop the attacking threat that Bowden offer, but then to deliver on the other end themselves. And interestingly, Brian Talty and James O'Kane are still on the pitch with the starting 15, so they're probably in from the start. O'Kane impressed off the bench during the week, kicked two beautiful points. Just looking down at the Bally Bowden team, it appears that Simon Lambert is in from the start no great surprise there as the players get those final words in the referee by the way is Liam Ahern Clark so that's Bally Bowden not the ref but you knew that already yeah I'm, I'm not o overly surprised by the Brian Talty call because if it does free up Brian Harrell to play a different type of role that just offers another uh, threat for Rahini that Bally Bowden needs to consider Jerry on the PA, such a comforting and familiar voice. His voice was supposed to be echoing around Crow Park today. Sadly, that hasn't happened, but hopefully it will be later in the year. A dedicated Kerry man, but you'd never, ever know that by listening to him in the stadium. He's he's as neutral as anyone outside of the counties that are playing, obviously. Bally Bowden players still doing the last few warm-ups. Rahini break out into their positions. And the Dublin Senior Football Championship quarterfinals about to resume. Ryan Basquale jogged over towards the bench. I thought to myself, they're not making a change this later. It's not part of a plan, but no, he's just going over to get a drink of water or something. It's just like Declan Manley is, is not playing in the middle of the field there where... Bally Bowden with Simon Lambert starting in there with Nicky Guy McCauley it appears a dual player Simon Lambert as
as is tradition, one of the players has shouted from the start. We, were you that guy for Ballantyre coming? The guy who shouted from the start? There's always <laughs> one. <laughs> I did my best work from the start. It was after that I had problems. Michael Dara McCauley wins the first ball, as you would expect, that basketball-style bat down. Of course, a basketballer of merit, Michael Dara McCauley. Bally Bowden sent in this in the blue and white. Nice turn by Colin Basquale. Basquale gets his shot away. And that is a lovely score. Less than 20 seconds gone. Yeah, what a ball in front of Basquale there to come out. He took it on the, the turn. Uh, Darren Byrne came out to try and win it in front of him, but he just that bit of pace that Basquale had got him out in front, turns and pops it over the bar. Great score, a great start for Bally Bowden. Good start for the defending champions, and Rahini tried to post an answer to Brian Howard, who's on the ball now. Roaming forward against Sean McMahon, did this to great effect during the week. Followed by Ryan Basquale. It's not a case of everyone dropping back, interestingly enough. It's three on three, back near the goal for Rahini. And here is Talti. Dispossessed brilliantly by Darren O'Reilly. Gavin Ivory. Drop short, easy for Dara Grogan. Gogan. Holland to Michael Dara McCauley. I spoke to Michael Dara McCauley during the week. He said, rather championship in front of no fans than, champion sh than no championship at all. He said players are working really hard all over the country for their clubs and they want to work hard for the county if they get the chance as well. Here's Conal Keeney. That's an unbelievable score from Conal Keeney. Uh, he was looking for an option inside him there, realised that there was nothing there and then decided he was going to take it on himself and from you know, 40 yards out the field, out to the left hand side, that's an outrageous score from Conal Keeney. It just shows the intent of the Ballyboden team. They're looking to move the ball very quick. They're looking for that fast movement of their inside line. And then when you have that type of threat inside, you know, there's problems already early doors for Rahini here. They got away with being turned over there. Rutherson Reel picks it up. Ben McHugh. Reel is there as a short option. Talti. It is interesting that Bally Bowden aren't afraid to leave three players up. Rahini come forward. Gavin Ivory. He's already had one shot that dropped short. Trying to find his way through is James O'Kane. We know he can shoot. He didn't on that occasion. Here's Darren Byrne who created a very good goal during the week. Which was pushed home by Brian Fenton. He gets a push on the back and Rahini gets something to cling on to. A free right in front of goal which they should be able to pop over. Yeah, so it, it looks at the moment that Rahini are playing two inside. And then at the half forward line has dropped out considerably. So they're very much looking to move the ball through the hands around 45 metres out from goal and then looking to try and work it inside to the two that are inside. There is a little bit of space there. You've seen that the Bally Bowden half-back line are back trying to support from a defensive point of view, but there's a huge amount of work involved in that. And is that sustainable over 60 minutes? They're going to find it hard to keep that going over 60 minutes if it's pushing up without delivering the ball that little bit earlier. They needed an early score and they've got one, especially after conceding two but there were two quality scorers that they conceded so far Rahini that's a lovely kick out and a great take and roaming up the park is Brian Bobbitt off to Basquale Flaherty Nelson a real stalwart of this team Keeney out to meet it sprightly as ever Ryan Basquale to Colin Basquale Ross McGarry, back out to Darren Nelson. Nelson has a runner on the right, didn't go to him. Recycled by Nelson. Rahini trying to block up the space, it falls out to Ross McGarry. Michael Darren McCauley. Simon Lambert, Simon Lambert takes it on. And it wouldn't quite bounce over. And it didn't quite have the energy it needed. No, but that's the, we mentioned at the start of the game, Rahini pulling boys back. That was 14 behind the ball there. They're blocking up space, trying to make it difficult for Bally Bowden. So if it goes slow, it suits Rahini that they'll organise that turnover. You hear the little bit of a cheer that came from their sideline on the back of that. That's what they're hoping to try and achieve across the game. But, but it does require a lot of work, requires a lot of concentration. And Bally Bowden will be looking to try and move the ball that bit quicker, not allow Rahini to set up in that format. It's Paul Dempsey wants his team to work hard. He's the Rahini manager, a proud club man. Moved on by Howard. 
push in the back and it's a free in and Rahini have the chance to draw level. Some massive bodies in that uh, centre field area. That's Rahini are trying to just condense it, keep it tight, not allow Bally Bowden out, but a, a good chance for them to draw level. Coming up at half four, Ballymun Kickham's taking on Nafina. That's live here on Dubs TV. The draw for the semi finals to be made afterwards. Wide from Gavin Ivory. Gogan. Really good take. Those kickouts are something they've obviously worked on. Here's Michael Dara McCauley. Robbie McDade. James Holland loses it, but luckily for him, it's spilled into the path of Darren Nelson, who's pursued by Brian Fenton, who's kind of tackling like an octopus and gives away the free. Michael Dara McCauley, is there a better sight in football than seeing him charging through the middle of a pitch? Colin Basquale, back to goal. Connell Keeney. Defended really well by Sean Byrne, who just stood him up and Keeney overran it. Yeah, great stuff. And, and you know, Rahini would have obviously looked at this, spoken about getting guys behind the ball. It's, it's not good enough just to have numbers behind the ball. You've got to hit guys. You've got to put a press on. And that's what Byrne did to organise the turnover. Sean McMahon screaming for it on this near side is Sean McCarthy. McMahon is bottled up. Michael Darren McCauley will try and intercept that. Talty gets to it. And it's another free for Rahini. Sean McCarthy has a man inside, but instead goes short to Brian Howard. You have to be a superstar to get away with a moustache like that, and he does pull <laughs> it off. It's Magnum P.I.-esque. Shatwell gets it to Brian Fenton. Talty. I wonder, does he have the Ferrari to match? Gavin Ivory got on the ball there. Ivory got back. Talty sweeps up the loose one, got it outside to Sean McCarthy, back to Talty. David Shatwell, Brian Howard, Shatwell, shimmies and shoots and drags it wide. Yeah, nice spell of possession for Rahini, but uh, you know, holding on to the ball like that, maybe it's the wrong guy just to take the shot at that point. Howard passed it on, maybe could have looked to have received a return pass there. You know, cornerbacks coming up the field, as I can attest to it, often doesn't end well. And at that instant, it tailed, it tailed off to the wide. Gogan goes long. Juggled and won brilliantly. Fenton can't stop Lambert. Here's Brian Bobbitt. Nelson screams for it and gets it. Michael Dara McCauley is near him, but he just scarpers past. Fenton shadowing him, so he goes outside to Connell Keeney. Keeney up against. Burn. Keeney tries to draw in another one. He's already got one cracker. Make that two. That's a beaut again. Left foot turns on to his right this time to send it over the bar. The movement inside uh, of uh, Bascal, Keeney, and McGarry, they're constantly shown, they're constantly causing problems for the full back line. So it looks like there's an option all the time. Great little pass inside for Keeney to turn on to his right and pop it over the bar. Nice score. Ben McHugh. Referee played blocker there on Robbie McDade. Talty. James O'Kane, O'Kane loses it, Nelson, Michael Darren McCauley aiming at Basquale, just put a little bit too much on it, but then Sean Byrne lost it and luckily for him, he got it back to Sean McMahon, Talty to Howard, Rutherson Real jogging down the left, but he's now being covered by Darren O'Reilly, Talty, Fenton, Fenton trying to get away from Robbie McDade, he does really well. free into Rahini. That is something they're getting changed from. When they run at that Bally Bowden defence, they are winning frees. Yeah, well, when you have that power that Brian Fenton have, you certainly are going to ask big questions defensively. Robbie McDade is no slouch either in terms of the physicality. But, you know, that straight line running is always difficult for a defender to get a stop on you without putting a hand across you. Brian Fenton probably knew he had an advantage there. It was a bit of a shot to nothing. Works out for him in terms of uh, orchestrating a free for his team. They have a lot of quality footballers, Rahini. Obviously, we obsess maybe on Fenton and Howard, but Robbie McDade would be a familiar name to anyone who follows the game around Dublin. A 
likewise, you know, Sean McMahon at centre back for Rahimi, really strong player, great club players, obviously been around Dublin setups as well. So they've some really strong, powerful players. They fall into the in any other county bracket. Yeah. It's dropping dangerously. Comes to Ivers. He has to go outside. Now it's into the hands of Sean McCarthy. That's a brilliant block. Might fall into the path of Ivers again. Another Ballyboat man throwing his body on the line. Rahini though, not for stopping. Howard has a bit of space. And Kieran McDonald's it over. Yeah, that's a great score. We s I spoke earlier about him. He gave a pass off to uh, Shatwell, who took a shot that uh, went wide, but maybe he could have looked for a shot himself for a turn pass. That time he took it on and stuck it over the bar outside the boot. Really great score from, uh, from Brian Howard. Great score for Rahini. First from play after... Oh, 10 minutes. Fenton, can he match what Howard just did? No, that's his second wide. Sorry for mentioning Kieran McDonald. I know that probably gives you nightmares still. Yeah, I had a blink there of 2006 and the heartache that carries with it. But we won't go there. Yeah. Tears on live TV is not good. Is that a bit loose? It is. The yeah, kickouts are working well for Bally Bowden. They've, they've avoided trying to bang it out to the middle of the field for Fenton and Howard Iron. As a consequence, they're getting a lot of joy with their shorter kick out. A poor delivery up the line turns over the ball. But certainly, uh, you know, for Heaney want to grow into the game, they probably need to start looking at putting a press on that kick out a little bit faster, up higher up the field. There's so much space in front of the Rahini goal. A bird has just landed on it and looks completely undisturbed. Here's Darren Byrne who's trying to disturb the Ballyboden defence. Goes outside to Derek Kyo, who can move and run. He can shoot as well, doesn't on this occasion. James O'Kane, thought about taking it on. Gives it back to Howard. Tails wide. Fourth wide for Rahini. Yeah, a little bit of a snatch at that one. If you look over the scores, you know, 45 metres out from goal where you know, he got a great score previous to that. No, it's a, lot, it's a hard work to get a score from there. McCarthy gets a fist on that. Now it's Ivory. Rahini have the free. And now they'll have the equaliser. And despite the fact that we seem to be doing nothing but praising Bally Bowden, Rahini are going to uh, get yeah, the equaliser. And I clearly put the commentator's curse on the goalkeeper with his kick out because it was that kick out that went astray. It looked like a great tackle from Shane Clayton originally to put a stop on, on the Rahini movement that time. But a referee has awarded a free subsequent to that. And a great opportunity to draw the game. And despite not having seen a huge amount of ball or action, you know they're, they're hanging on to Ballyboden's coattails. That defensive shield that they're dropping back behind is, is causing Ballyboden a problem. Good score from Derek Yo. I remember going out to see Rahini play Croaks um, last year. It wasn't here. I forget exactly where it was. But um, I remember thinking on the night that if they could just find that little bit more balance, and I, I'm about to use a horrible world word that many football people don't like, if they could find the transition and get the ball forward faster, they could be dangerous. And they've certainly found that balance this season. Fenton. That's a really good ball inside. Oh, but it's not matched by the finish from Ivers. The goal was open. What a great chance for Rahili. Brilliant pass from Brian Fenton. He tried to rise it over the goalpier, just came off the crossbar and came away, but you know, when you put pressure on the kick out, that's the type of joy and, and results you get from it. Fenton picks up the ball, delivers a fantastic pass, pops it inside, what a ball inside. Looks to pop it over the goalkeeper, it's just unfortunate. Maybe comes off the upright rather than the crossbar, so a little bit too high. But just demonstrates as a threat there if they can get moving. Here's Keeney, oh, it just comes off him, but bounces into the path of McGarry. McGarry! Oh. oh, this time it goes over, having hit the woodwork. But he was going for goal, no doubt about that. Yeah, one end to the other, you'd, you'd think maybe the shot was on his right side if he could have taken it there first. Keeney almost picked up the break as it came in front of him, came back to McGarry, went right initially, and then decided to check back onto the left side. Drove it high, but off the crossbar and over the bar. And from one end to the other, we've had uh, a couple of raspers that could have and should have resulted in goals. Even when he doesn't mean to, Keeney still delivers perfect passes. It came off him into the path of McGarry. McGarry with some nice footwork to get the time and space to get the shot away. Was looking for the goal, but has to settle for the point. point. Here's Sean McMahon. McMahon trying to get away from Robbie McDade. Okay. 
little bit bottled up, so has to go back to Ivory. Ivory from an angle. Oh, oh. desperately unlucky. The second shot in a row that goes off the woodwork for Rahini. Yeah, a, a really top quality forward to Gavin Ivory. Un unlucky there not to get a score. Second cross or upright that's been hit from a Rahini point of view. You know, they're causing Bally Bowden some problems. They're getting on a little bit of ball. And they maybe don't have the same pace in their attack that Bally Bowden have. But when they're getting opportunities, they're almost carving out those scores. And but for a couple of, uh, you know, licks of paint, they may be in front here rather than trailing by a point after a quarter of an hour. Darren O'Reilly putting it through his hands. Michael Darren McCauley is going to be beaten to it by Real. In fairness, it wasn't a fair race. Sean McCarthy has Real as an option. Fenton. Darren Burns sneaking in on the right hand side. Might just fist it over himself, he does. They are getting in on the wings, aren't they? Yeah, great score. Well, Bally Bowden have, have sucked in. They're trying to block a line through the middle, but as a consequence, then it's leaving a little bit of space. And both uh, Darren O'Reilly and Kieran Kennedy are dropped right back to field. And as a result, then there is those gaps on the either side of the flank. So as we head into the water break, you know, you can start to see the influence that if, if Fenton has the ball, he's able to pick out those passes. He needs support runners. That time he was fortunate enough that it was uh, Darren Byrne who got up alongside him to fist it over the bar. But that's the type of movement, the type of display that they need to give here is getting on the ball, creating the chances, and then taking those chances, which then causes and asks questions of this Bally Bowden defensive line. Well, Darren Byrne gifted Brian Fenton the goal during the week. Fenton repaying the favour there. The water break has come at the right wrong time for Rahini, hasn't it? Yeah, for sure. Well, they, they've... They've grown into the game. I, I was a little bit concerned initially that they might have been uh, slow in, in dropping people back. But what they have identified is that you know both flanks are available to them in terms of uh, you know support from their defensive line. You know, Brian Fenton, a couple of great passes there. One that possibly could have led to a goal, and the second that has resulted in a point. You know, Bally Bowden, while you know their forward line have shown that they can kick scores from distance, they probably haven't been as fluid as you'd like to see. They struggle to get the ball from their 40, from 50 yards out into that inside line. And Rahini just growing a little bit of confidence into it and Bally Bowden struggling to maybe stamp their authority on the game. So certainly from Rahini's point of view, you'd be delighted after you know, a quarter of an hour to be uh, uh, draw scores, given that you know they were two down early on. So they're starting to grow into the game and starting to show a little bit more. Both teams will stick to the referee's whistle here. We saw what happened in Antrim during the week when one team didn't and the ref started the game without them and they conceded a goal. We know you'd rather be in Parnell Park watching this game, but unfortunately you can't be here today However you are watching, and you're not just watching in Dublin, you're watching around the world. So if you want to say hello, uh, then send us a message via Twitter, at official. Uh, that's also the address for the Instagram account. You can also get us on Facebook. Not having a crowd isn't, make too, isn't making too much of a difference to the games. We've had some exciting ones in the last couple of weeks in the Dublin Championship in both hurling and football. And those are just the ones we've seen, of course, in senior B, in intermediate, in junior, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And there is a G. It's exciting too. So Bally Bowden will want to control all to lead a bit here. They started well, but Rahini have settled into the game. Basketball style bounce from Holland, who gets it back to Colin Basquell. Colin Basquell, it's a little bit aimless. Ben McHugh intercepts. Spills it to Gavin Ivory. Talty. James O'Kane. Derek Yo. Outside is Gavin Ivory. Fenton is down off the ball. James O'Kane takes it, but he's in a crowd. Hand left on him there by Michael Darren McCauley. It's a free in. Yeah, I think the linesman on the far side uh, may be looking to, to catch the referee's attention given that Fenton hit the, the deck there. So it'll be interesting to see if he's going to speak to anyone. Seems happy enough. It's going to allow things to continue. Ivory to put Rahini in front for the first time in this game. Straight over the black spot. Beautiful strike by Ivory. Yeah, great response from Rahini. They were, as I said, they've grown into the game. Uh, they've put a couple wide, uh, three I think at this stage, so the fact that they've managed to get a couple of scores 
uh, from place ball, starting to grow into the game a little bit. So now it's up to Bally Bowden to try and up the game a bit. They're playing a little bit at Rahini's pace, and that's suiting Rahini down to the ground. They probably need to just rise the tempo slightly. Darren Nelson, he's looking inside for Ryan Basquel. Basquel just about keeps it in play, under pressure from Darren Byrne. Darren Nelson, Michael Darren McCauley. The delay in games actually kind of suited him because he had an injury at the start of the year. Here's Luke O'Donoghue, who's not long off the bench. He's found a gap. O'Donoghue, can he hook this one over? It would be some score if he did. Oh, that's a lovely score. Yeah, great score from Luke O'Donoghue. Again, you spoke about you know that direct line when guys go at the defence at pace. Sometimes it creates a scoring opportunity, and that's exactly what happened that time. Instead of passing the ball left to right and going side to side, the direct line is often what works best. So, you know, Bally Bowden just rising the tempo a little bit. O'Donoghue giving a bit of direction. See if the rest can follow now. Rahini giving away possession. Bally Bowden camped in their half. Colin Basquale is plenty of willing takers, but he just pumps it inside the square. Falls to Michael Darren McCauley. Good block. That was uh, Sean Byrne. Chance not gone, and it's guided over by Darren O'Reilly. Yeah, great block by Byrne there. Two big men in at the edge of the square, Keeney and, and McCauley. Ball drops. He spins on it, McCauley. A great block, dives down to block it, and uh, O'Reilly does well then to lift it and stick it over the bar. No ways for Bally Bowden. Very clinical in front of goal, but maybe not creating as much as they'd like to at this stage. Great turnover. Yeah, it's lost by Sean McMahon. It's going to be guided over by Keeney. Rahini say it's wide, but the white flag goes up and Keeney collects his third point. Yeah, that was real pressure on the kick out there. You know, arguably, Rahini might look at it and say there was a foul on the defender coming out with the ball, but real pressure from Riley to win the ball. Keeney spins and knocks it over the bar. But that's where Bally Bowden now are looking to squeeze up. I mentioned about raising the tempo a little bit. They're now saying to Rahini, you've got to find someone. We're not going to allow you the short kick out. Burn got himself into trouble and handled it on the ground and it's oh no actually it's a free out it's Sean McMahon Ben McHugh this is what Rahini liked to run the ball down the park oh I jinxed him completely Darren O'Reilly down the line it goes to Ryan Basquale Sean Burns standing in the way so he just goes over rather than through or around and that is a really well taken score yeah, unbelievable. Four scores in the space of you know two and a half, three minutes there from Bally Bowden and just spins it around. They build out a three-point advantage fairly quickly. You know, turnovers at this level are going to be punished, particularly against this type of Bally Bowden team with the talent they have. Uh, and ultimately, when the ball was lost by uh, Ben McHugh coming out, Bowden punished him. Four in a row from Bally Bowden has them back in control. Brian Howard, Gavin Ivory, Ives, O'Kane, hasn't really had the chance to shoot yet O'Kane, has to be careful not to take too many steps, he did well, here's Sean McMahon, McMahon kind of loses it and kind of guides it out to James O'Kane if that makes sense he was about to lose it but just got a finger on it here's Brian Howard trying to get around Michael Dara McCauley Brian Howard another wide for Rahini yeah great work for Bally Bowden real pressure in the tackle there real intensity in, in the work that they're trying to do I mentioned a couple of minutes ago but just pushing the raising the tempo a little bit starting to ask Rahini a few more questions and that's what they've done there four scores in a row really working hard in the tackle and putting the pressure on Rahini now. Holland shunts it down the line for Basquale, who just about gets there, Ryan Basquale. He's got Ross McGarry calling for it. Instead, he goes inside to James Holland. Holland tries to squeeze it to Colin Basquale. Basquale didn't have a, a whole pile of angle to work with there. It looked like it came off the goalkeeper to me, and the officials agree it's a 45. Yeah, really tight. Uh, great little bit of movement from Basquale to win the ball, finds a pass inside, and then it's Holland who pops it across then for... Uh, Colin Basquale, keeper does well to smother but really tight angle, difficult to get onto from there maybe should have just stuck a fist to it as it came across but a chance now for uh, uh, Derek Gogan to come up and have a go from a 45 
So common, we no longer debate it. Goalkeepers coming up to strike 45, so there's no longer, I think as well, the pressure on them to land it because there was this narrative that, oh, if they come all the way up, then they have to land it. It's the same pressure on them as it is an outfielder. Yeah, you almost expect to see them now. You're, you're, you're disappointed when it's not the keeper kicking them almost. Gogan. And then we put the... Still Kept in. alive by Ballypoten, but it falls into the path of Sean McMahon. O'Reilly does really well to dispossess him. Inside to Colin Basquell. Basquell does really well, O'Reilly. Blocked on its route to goal. Sean McMahon gives it back to Darren Byrne. Yeah, maybe just tried to force the goal opportunity there. It was definitely a point for the take and probably just enough bodies behind the ball for Rahini meant the goal chance was probably snuffed out a little bit earlier. Uh, but you can just see the intent. They obviously don't get 13 goals across three championship games if you're not looking for goals all the time. So that's really where Ballybone are looking to turn the screw when they see a half chance for a goal, they try and turn it into a full one. Robbie McDade pickpocketing Fenton there. Ballyboden of the free. Darren Nelson. Luke O'Donoghue. Basquel. Ryan Basquel aims a big ball towards Darren O'Reilly. Strong Mayo connections for the Basquels, but they're insistent that if they play county football, it will be for Dublin. Yeah, just looking back on that, it looked like Colin Basquel just lost his footing when he tried to come back onto his left side, but Rahini did well to smother it out. But certainly, you get the sense from Ballyboden that they're looking to put apply more and more pressure, looking to rise the tempo a little bit. Uh, yeah, looking to rise the pressure a little bit, and, and Rahini just looking to need to work a little bit harder to win those kickouts. Heaps to Howard. Howard with the diving pass to McMahon. Dara Kyo. Good ball to Talty. Nice turn. It just squeezes out of his hands. I beg your pardon. It's James O'Kane. James O'Kane back out to Kyo. Sean McMahon still with Kyo. He wanted it back, but instead it's Rutherson Real. Back he goes to David Shatwell. Rutherson Real. Shatwell. Howard, Ben McHugh, Fenton, good ball inside, nice turn by Sean McCarthy, McCarthy tries to find okay and it's intercepted by Luke O'Donoghue and then cleaned up by O'Reilly, it's spilled and the goalkeeper just hacks it away, it's intercepted by Fenton, Ben McHugh runs onto it. Howard, nice ball inside, Talty. No fouling, be patient is the call from the Ballyboden bench. Here's Brian Howard. James O'Kane, O'Kane does get the room to shoot. That won't draw in though. No, but the, you know, Struggling really to get that killer pass. Brian Fenton picked one out there, but uh, Ballyboden managed to snuff it out. And again, there it's, it's the ferociousness of Ballyboden's tackle. It's, it's getting in their face. It's making it difficult for them to pick out a pass for their inside line. And if Ballyboden then can manage to sneak a turnover, there's huge space for them to play into. Handled on the ground by Basquell. It's a free to Rahini. They take it quickly. They might regret that decision because it's intercepted by Luke O'Donoghue. who down the line. Good ball to Basquell. Valley Bowden still searching for a double at senior A level. Keep in mind, here's Ross McGarry. Keeney wants it on that far side. He's going to keep it short to Michael Dara McCauley. Neat turn by Ryan Basquell. Connell Keeney, who is one of those players looking for an individual double, if that makes sense. I don't think the referee was overly enamoured with uh, Connell Keeney's effort at a hand pass there. He's given a free out to Rahini. Sean Byrne. Joe's found a bit of space, but instead they go to Fenton. James O'Kane. He'll go for it this time, and this time he gets it. Yeah, better movement from Rahini. A lot quicker transition into the, the forward line. Uh, and, th and that space then allows itself for forward to have a, an opportunity at goal. McCain had uh, put one wide just prior to that, so manages to get himself on the score sheet. And referee is... Uh, Looks like he's going to give a hot ball in the centre here because the goalkeeper's kick out failed to travel across the 21 metre line, I think. 
that's really frustrating for managers when they see their team make technical mistakes like that. Rahini getting their first score through James O'Kane for around 10 minutes there. They needed that boost coming up to half time. Yeah, it's a big score for them because they had gone a period without a score. They, they've had a lot of possession. They just haven't managed to penetrate that Ballyboden back line. Ballyboden working very hard defensively. Flip side of that is Ballyboden probably a little bit slow in possession themselves, not holding on to it the way you'd expect from them. Uh, although they've won that top ball and come away with it. I, I don't even know why any team contests those balls with <laughs> Michael Darren <laughs> McCauley. What's the point? Just let just allow it to drop to a Bally Bowden player. Take out the middleman. A bit of messing afterwards. Now Rahini's point came in response to four Bally Bowden scores in a row. They have been unlucky at times, even though they have kicked uh, five wides, Rahini's they have hit the woodwork twice. Robbie McDade inside is Clayton. Clayton back to McDade. McDade getting around Ben McHugh. McHugh in fairness gets back but he has fouled his man to free into Ballyboden. Yeah and I'm not sure if I have my stats right but this could be the first uh, scoring opportunity from a free for Ballyboden I think as we head over into uh, injury time. So it, while they've been you know clinical in front of goal they haven't had a huge amount of ball inside in that full forward line so hence there hasn't been a huge amount of chances for them through frees or Rahini have been quite dif um, disciplined in terms of their tackling but certainly an opportunity here to stretch it out again to a four point lead and you'd expect it to be scored there is a breeze it's not very stiff shouldn't make a difference it is blowing into that end and over it goes from Basquel and you are quite right Coleman that is Bally Bowden's first score from a free today yeah, well, there's two elements of that. I guess there's great discipline from Rohini and that they've been stood up. They've had a lot of numbers behind the ball and they've made it hard for Bally Bowden. The flip side is that Bally Bowden have been slow in that transition that we spoke about and getting it up to their full forward line. Uh, and maybe that's credit to Rohini, but it's probably a little bit of work that Anthony Rainbow will be looking to talk to these guys at half time about in terms of improving on that delivery and, s and quickening the pace a little bit. Have we a twist or two before the break? Bally Bowden come forward to Bobbitt a good movement off the wing back to Bobbitt it goes he's got Basquel calling for it in the square Bobbitt off the line and Rahini live dangerously and get away with it once again here's Connell Keeney looking for his fourth point it's blocked down by Shatwell there's a little bit of a wrestle afterwards Talty and Michael Dara having a bit of a pushing match yeah, I think it was Connell Keeney maybe who just after he'd uh, kicked his shot and was blocked he'd maybe pulled the guy to the ground but I think great work by uh, Darren Byrne on the line for Rahini here so great pace coming through there with Bobbitt shifts it looks for a pass but then decides to take it on himself and I think it's uh, uh, Byrne on the line who manages to get a couple of hands on it to get it away so just after the block here I think Keeney just pulls the guy onto the ground here it's probably uh, a yellow card and no more well that's it it's half time Bally Bowden St Enders leading by nine points to six against Rohini and I think the scoreline kind of is a fair reflection of the play yeah, in some respects it is. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, Rahini have kicked, uh, uh, I think it's probably four or five wides. They've hit a uh, crossbar and upright a couple of times. Uh, or, yeah, an upright a couple of times. So th they've had a lot of possession. They've had some scoring opportunities. They, they maybe haven't been as disciplined in their shot selection as you would hope from a team when you're at this level. Ballyboden on the other end, while they've been you know very physical in their tackling, they've been clinical in terms of their work in front of goals. Only the one point from a free which came in injury time in the first half. They probably haven't put the, the stamp of authority that you'd expect from them onto the game at this stage. And as such, have, have very well left the door open for Heaney if it's a case and they be can maybe generate a couple of more scores. I, I do feel if they want to win it, they're probably going to have to get a goal. Uh, and so far, they haven't really looked like causing that much of a problem to Bally Bowden in terms of goal scoring opportunities. And it's amazing that we haven't seen goals in this game because they both have had chances granted Bally Bowden with a lot more than Rahini. Yeah, for sure. Like, in terms of it, like the, just looking at the movement here, the difference is the pace that maybe Bally Bowden have across their forward line, and they've guys coming up to support in the play. So that's where they create this, uh, you know, overlap or an extra player in possession, which gives them those goal scoring opportunities. Because of the way Rahini are playing with a lot of numbers out around the middle of the field and bodies behind the ball, they don't have that same support for the guys inside to come with guys on the peel. They have managed to get some scores from 30, 35 meters out because they have support runners. But to break that line and get, you know, 10 yards, 15 yards closer to goal, so that you're now starting to potentially create a half chance for a goal that then leads to something that's where ultimately is this was probably the closest we came to the goal great work on the line we've seen a great goal line clearance yesterday as well from Marcus Strange from St Vincent so obviously guys have been watching to see how we improve on that and 
uh, Darren Byrne this time stood up to take it off the line for Rahini. Well, that off the line clearance for St. Vincent's yesterday was in vain because they went on to be beaten and beaten fairly well by Kilmacud Croaks. Rahini will hope that that dramatic moment, that Superman like save from Byrne, we think it was on the line isn't going to go to waste. Just three points behind them, at the, between them at the break. It is the Dublin Senior Football Championship quarterfinal, Ballyboden St. Enders against Rahini. Don't forget, coming up a li little bit later on at half four, we've got Ballymun Kickhams against Nafina. We'll have the draw for the semi finals after that match. St. Jude's and Kimmel Cook Croaks already in the hat. Who will join them today? Will it be Baddy Bowden? Will it be Rahini? Will it be Ballymun or Nafina? Well, you can check it all out live here on Dubs TV. We've got a couple of messages uh, via Twitter, uh, the Twitter address at Dub. GEA official. Uh, one from Glenn Cullen. Ross Rafferty is watching. Ross, I hope you're enjoying the game. And one from Lagos, Nigeria. Desmond Adebayo is watching. He used to play uh, underage football and hurling with Rahini. Uh, Desmond, hope you're enjoying the game. Uh, at half time, it's Ballyboden St. Enders, nine points. Rahini, six points. Uh, the picture will stay with you, but the sound from me and Coleman will go off for a few minutes as we take a break. But we'll be back uh, for second half commentary. So stay with us.
Well, the picture never went away, but as I say, the sound took a bit of a break. Coleman and I back with you now for the second half. Ballyboden St. Enders leading Rahini by three points. Um, Coleman, what do you expect from the second half? Yeah, I, I honestly think that uh, there would have been some harsh words with Ballyboden around just quickening the pace of the game. Rahini have been excellent in, in the way they've set up and that they've got bodies behind the ball. They've tried to frustrate Ballyboden. They've tried to slow down that delivery into the guys that they know are going to cause them problems. Uh, and as a consequence, have managed to you know get a good foothold into the game, kicked a couple of bad wides, and uh, could be closer to Ballyboden. But I, I imagine from a Ballyboden point of view, it'll be a case of let's up the tempo a little bit here and let's try and put a bit of a squeeze on Rahini. From a Rahini point of view, it'll be a little bit more of the same, but probably the big ask is can we get the ball into our inside line a little bit quicker? Uh, can we get you know more out of uh, Fenton and Howard in the middle of the field in terms of maybe coming through with a little bit of pace? And if they could create that bit of an overlap, it's probably to try and go for that goal opportunity that they managed to create if they can and see if they can get something from that. Well, of all the teams left in the competition, Rohini and St. Jude's are the only two never to have won a Dublin Senior Championship. Rohini, well, I suppose the concentration at the moment is staying in it rather than winning it, but they'd love to collect that trophy if they possibly could. But then again, who wouldn't? Into the hands, turning and twisting is okay. Back to Howard. Snapshot from Howard, just about climbs over. Yeah, brilliant score. He actually made a great run to the after he delivered the pass in the first instance. He went right, uh, and if it had been turned quick enough, we would probably had a clear path to goal. They did eventually might have found him. So you can just see he'd gone out of the picture there. Initially, he had found himself space, but great feet there. Shimmy to go right, turned left, stuck it over the bar. And we just mentioned about how can we get these guys into the game more from a Heaney point of view. Great start for the second half for a Heaney. A little bit more of the same required. Darren Nelson. Carried up the park by Kieran Kennedy. Simon Lambert. Bobbitt. Darren Nelson. Who, like me, didn't get the memo that the Barbers are back open. Holland. Nelson. What a footballer he is, though. What a servant to Ballyboden. And he's still young. Yeah, he's been, he's been excellent. Uh, All-Ireland club winning captain, I think, a couple of years ago. So really good uh, servant for Ballyboden. Didn't play probably as much last year as he would have liked, but certainly has managed to find his way back into the team. But this is great from, from Rahini. Not only are they dropping guys behind the ball, y they're working hard to tag guys and make it difficult for Ballyboden. And if forced a third over like that is, is great stuff. Often teams drop players behind the ball, but they don't work hard enough. They're trying to block space rather than pick up players who are coming in possession or looking to pick up a guy in the loop. Rahini are doing two jobs, dropping guys behind the ball, but also getting hands on so there's not e no easy passes for Ballyboden. Free out for Rahini, which will be taken by Sean McMahon. Kieran Heaps. Sean McCarthy. A rare thing in this game, a player with a bit of time and a bit of space. Darren Byrne. Sean McCarthy. Brian Howard. Talty. Talty initially wanted it back, but Howard with a good ball to Ivory, now Brian Fenton. Rutherson Real. Spots a runner, gives it to James O'Kane. In the middle, completely free was David Shatwell, but they either didn't spot him or just didn't fancy giving him the pass. Sean McCarthy. Real was the target, Real trips over his own man. Rahini down to 14 at the moment, man down. Real trying to get through tackles, does really well. Real still going, trips over himself. But the referee says it was Clayton who tripped him and it is a free in. Yeah, and a great opportunity to trim the gap to one. There was there was a definitely a chance of a goal just prior to that. Uh, great movement from, uh, I think it was Darren Byrne again, coming on the fly. Just failed to spot that run and as a consequence that avenue was then closed but managed to recycle possession create a chance again for Gavin Ivory to try and knock one over off the ground here from a free and um, Bally Bowden struggling with the defensive work that Rohini are putting in front of them and as a consequence Rohini growing in confidence minute by minute. Gavin Ivory pops it over two points in a row at the start of the second half for Rohini the gap is down to one Shatwell was the man who was down I'm just trying to see if he went off or not because I was keeping an eye on that free from Ivory Granted, there was no need to actually watch that free because you knew from that position Ivory would pop it over. Rahini are making a change, but it's Sean McCarthy who's going off. 
He's been replaced by Sean Grenham, wearing 13. Grenham, a lively and wiry forward. What a catch by Michael Darren McCauley. Trying to drift it in behind, but Darren Byrne read it really well. And he's fouled on the way out. Bally Bowden's discipline, not great at the start of the second half. No, they're, they're, you know, they've, they've come in after half time. They have failed to up to pit tempo. Rahini are starting to think there's an opportunity here. A little bit of better movement. Bally Bowden getting a little bit cantankerous with each other, I guess. And Rahini you know, giving themselves an opportunity, a real opportunity to try and uh, ask questions of this Bally Bowden team. Sean Byrne. Byrne back to Ivory. David Shatwell, who we're happy to say is back up and running and over his injury. That was a bit of a blind ball. It does fall out to Brian Fenton. Trying to get under that as Ivers. The goalkeeper has to be careful. Goga does really well. Gives away the 45, but it was a case of safety first there. Yeah, definitely. Brian Fenton was probably looking for uh, you know, free after he kicked the ball. He felt maybe that he was fouled. If we see it again, the way he holds the ball in one hand there, it's like a guy going out with a bottle of water <laughs> rather than a big letter football. But he, he spun right, and uh, you know, potentially Robbie McDay left a hand on him late, but they're going to get a chance from a 45. Ivory's Ivory been good with his freeze, 45 metres out. Will he get enough distance on it? Flags are limp around the ground. The breeze has died off, even the bit of breeze that was there. So Ivory to level it up six minutes into the second half. Ivory has the distance, but not the accuracy. Oh, and Rahini would be you know, disappointed. The first half did a number of wides. You know, Gavin Ivory leaves that one wide there. You know, you, you think of winning big championship matches. Often free taken 45s, that becomes a critical element of the game. Bobbitt gets it going quickly. James Holland, smart advantage taken by Bobbitt. Holland continuing his run, but they don't go to him. It is Colin Basquell who takes a bit out of the ball, but didn't want to give it away. A skipping crossfielder comes to Kieran Kennedy. Basquell. Keeney, oh, he took his eye off it for a second. But Toe pokes it into the path of Basquell, who lets it off. And that's taken out over the line. And it's a Rahini ball. Just isn't happening for Bally Bowden at the moment. I, I'll drop a cliche in, Coleman. You can, you can explain it. There doesn't seem to be a flow about Bally Bowden. Why is that? Yeah, I, 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 uh, Rahini have obviously put a lot of work into putting pressure on defensively and getting numbers behind the ball. But they're just too ponderous on the ball. They're not making those deliveries inside to the two Basquells to get them into the game. So... All the football is happening out around the middle of the field. No chance for the guys inside. And their, their runs that they were showing for where they might have been getting ball, they're no longer making those runs because the balls aren't coming quick enough for them. Brian Howard. Talty. Big boost for Rahini that he was able to start. Ivers. Grenham. Not long off the bench, he's dispossessed, but he does wonderfully well to recycle it out to Ivory. Can they find a way through? They can, it's Ben McHugh. But the referee, is he saying that it was an illegal hand pass and that the ball was more thrown than fisted? Yeah, he, he certainly is. seems to be indicating that. It was a great move because it was uh, well, let's Ben have a look. McHugh, I think, who came yeah. through. It was O'Kane who gets the pass. O'Kane coming in. Yeah, from, from my point of view, it certainly looked good. Great feat by McHugh, created a goal scoring opportunity, albeit that uh, Bally Bowden had maybe stopped after the whistle from the referee, but it certainly looked like a good pass from, from our vantage point I here and just re-looking at it. I wonder, is he saying that he kind of threw it up, then fisted it? It, it probably doesn't matter what he <laughs> thinks. Bally Bowden would be delighted just to yeah, come exactly, away. Exactly, yeah. Because right. they really are struggling to uh, to find that bit of momentum in their play to, you know, that fluency that you generally expect from him just isn't there as you rightly said. Derek Kyo has gone off for Rahini as Ryan Basquell comes hunting they need to get guys like him on it close to goal but Sean McMahon with a really good hand in Michael Darren McCauley in those are we saying turquoise boots <laughs> green I only know the primary colours <laughs> Lambert Well, back to Robbie McDade. 
by Kazara McCauley. Weaving his run a bit. That was a good spot. Here's Ross McGarry. Basquell loses it, tries to regather under pressure from McMahon. Brian Fenton is there to take it. Yeah, really, really great work from, from Rahini. The way they've set themselves up to cause Bally Bowden problems. Well kept in. Yeah, it's great. I, I mentioned that a couple of minutes ago, you know, it's, it's great to have players behind the ball, but unless you have guys really trying to physically impact themselves on the game, numbers are no use to them. Rahini have done really well uh, in implementing their game plan is, yes, they have players behind the ball, but they're pressing the ball as well. They're not making it easy for guys out the field to find a pass inside. And the likes of Ryan, Colin Basquale, they're not seeing a huge amount of ball. Ross McGarry similarly hasn't had a huge amount of touches. We're 10 minutes through the second half here. No score from Bally Bowden in those opening 10 minutes. So they're really struggling to to influence the game and, and move the ball quick enough to their forwards. And as a consequence, Rahini are seeing that their defensive formation is working. And if they can keep to that plan, and as you rightly said, move the ball that little bit earlier out to their forwards, they've every chance of creating more scoring opportunities for themselves. Colin Basquale takes matters into his own hands. Luke O'Donoghue going for a jog up as well. Man down for Rahini. That's why we moved the late. Just two points scored in the half so far, both from Rahini. Colin Keeney scored three for Bally Bowden in the first half. Hasn't really had a sniff of it in the second so far. But Gary O'Donoghue, O'Reilly, and Ryan Basquell also on the mark column with one from play, one from a free. So this will be his second from a free. It's fisted on, and I think it's off the woodwork again. Well, it was either a Rahini hand or the woodwork, but either way, it didn't go into the back of the net, which it very, very nearly did. Yeah, I'm not sure the umpire is too sure either what uh, what happened there. Big ball across, Connell Keeney on the edge of the square, tried to stick a fist onto it. Did it shoot past the goal rather than touch off the crossbar? We're not quite sure, but uh, a bit of indecision. Referees decided to kick out and away come Rahini. And on such games, things can turn. Or on such things, games can turn. Here's Brian Fenton. Fenton received from Ivory. Looking inside for Grenham. Clayton gives away the 45. Yeah, great tackle from Shane Clayton. Well, there. it's not a 45, it's a kick out. Clayton got his hand in. Yeah, it was a great tackle. Certainly slapped the ball away from Grenham that time. Should have been a 45 for Rahini. You can sense why their disappointment is there, so has it evened itself yeah, out? Yeah, I was maybe? just about to say, Ballyboden will argue that that's instant karma because they should have had a 45 on the other end. Gogan taking his time here. Jogging into a little bit of space is Robbie McDade. It was a decoy run, though. Michael Darren McCauley pushes it on. Really well intercepted by Brian Howard, who's fouled. Yeah, brilliant. Just got his body in front there. Took a shoulder into the back rather than side contact and wins the free for Rahini. Uh, there's definitely an opportunity for Rahini here. If they, they've had loads of ball, loads of possession. Uh, just need to be that little bit more clinical in front of goal. But they're putting questions to Bally Bowden. Bally Bowden struggling to answer them. Fenton. Still going. Is there a goal on here? Oh, he loses it. Tries to get it back. In fact, handled it on the ground. Free out for Bally Bowden if they want it. But they'll take the advantage. Michael Dara McCauley. It's two on two inside. He plays what is, I suppose, at best a 50-50 ball, which is intercepted by Darren Byrne. But he spills it out over the line. And it will be a Bally Bowden ball. Yeah, unlucky on Darren Byrne there. He got out in front, won the ball. Thought he might have got a push in the back that he might have been fortunate or unfortunate not to get a free from there. But Bally Bowden managed to win a line ball from it. David Shatwell standing over a Bally Bowden player who's gone down in or around the square. Connell Keeney is there. Now it's Michael Dara McCauley. Does the shimmy, loses it, gets it back. Michael Dara McCauley, he's squeezed. He'll want a penalty and he will get it for the foot block. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it's called for a foot block. Uh, just it, there was an incident just in front of that. Darren O'Reilly um, uh, and David Shatwell were kind of, you know, stuck into each other, I guess. And they just left a little bit of space for McCauley to drift into to win the penalty. Certainly stood across him, but I'm not sure if, if McCauley was, had the ball dropped down to foot, but certainly there was a contact with feet in, in that uh, a couple of Rahini players who came across to Michael Darren McCauley before he managed to get a shot away. Well, Carney, number 26, who's come off the bench, certainly got his foot on it, but what's the referee thinking, I wonder, because he's having a chat with the umpires. I'm not sure where he's... Has he gone so is he saying that the ball was kind of dropped and... 
he's pointing is he pointed at the spot? I think he's He is, I think, yeah. Penalty Valley Bowden. <laughs> Not overly clear what decision <laughs> has been made. Well Ryan Basquell is clear. He's putting the ball down. Well let's have another look at it here. Yeah, definitely there's a foot across him, so there's no attempt to block it. He stepped across, you know, whether McCauley has contacted fully with the ball or not is debatable. They've waited nearly 15 minutes for their first score. It would be a big one if they could get it. Ryan Basquell. That's a beautiful, beautiful finish. And Bally Bowden now lead by four, having not played overly well in the second half so far. Yeah, well, no score uh, for... You know, almost 15 minutes of the second half there. Suddenly get a, a chance from the penalty spot and he, he sticks it into the corner. And uh, despite the imposing figure of, of Kieran Heaps in front of him, does well to finish it. But they're lucky in, in respect of the opportunity. There was a little bit of space created by what was going on in front of the goalkeeper. Michael Darren McCauley drifted into the space and was fouled for the penalty. And absolutely was the right decision in terms of the penalty. But Rahini, for all the work, for all the possession, you know, find themselves four points adrift when, you know, arguably they have had enough ball to be certainly level, if not in front at this point. Owen Kyo sends it on to Rutherson Real. Change made for Ballypoden, by the way. Darren O'Reilly has gone off. Coming on is uh, Donna McCabe. Kearney. Hunted down by Brian Bobbitt. Darren Byrne loses it. You can just sense there's something a bit different about Ballyboden in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, well, a goal is always going to give you a lift. That's great work by Brian Bobbitt to win back the ball. They work really hard to get that turnover for Ballyboden. So the goal gives you a lift. Great turnover, hand in from Ivory. James O'Kane trying to get past Robbie McDade. Kane still going. O'Kane inside. It's a little bit blind and it's intercepted. And he had options. That's the frustrating thing. Yeah, oh. he had... He did have options in front of him, made the wrong pass at the end there. Pass probably could have come a little bit earlier. McCarry. Bally Bowden looking more confident on the ball now. Ryan Basquale. Inside to Ross McGarry. Has a look up. Thought about shooting and said gave it to Colin Basquale. Now it's Connell Keeney. Kieran Kennedy is in acres of space on the right-hand side. Michael Darren McCauley gives it inside to James Holland or outside to James Holland. Colin Basquale, Kieran Kennedy. Colin Basquale makes it dark, but he didn't go to him. Plays it cleverly back to Brian Bobbitt in fairness, or I beg your pardon, Robbie McDade. Holland inside to Ross McGarry. Presented for McDade. Kennedy. The shot will come from Ross McGarry. Didn't catch it right. No, but I, I, I once again, you know, Bally Bowden really struggling to break down the work that Rahini are doing from a defensive point of view. Th their, their shots have been from 45 metres out uh, when they've had an opportunity. They're failing to get past the line, failing to hit it inside, you know, 20, 30 metres to give themselves a scoring opportunity. Great finish from the penalty spot. As we head into the water break, I in the first half, Rahini scored nine, eight from play, one from a free. Two scores in the second half, a free and a penalty. They've really struggled to be any way cohesive uh, in an attacking point of view. Defensively, they've worked hard. Flip that. Rahini have been brilliant defensively. They probably, you know, if they had a, you know, maybe a little bit more pace in their forward line, they'd maybe have someone who's shown and winning the ball to win them a couple of scores or get them a couple of scores. And despite the dominance that they had, they only managed to carve out a couple of scores in the opening quarter of that second half. So hugely dominant, great defensive performance, maybe just lacking one or two additional forwards are scoring options to try and help them see out a game like this. Flip side, Michael Darren McCauley makes a burst through the middle, gets fouled for a penalty, and it, it gives them the, an advantage when they've, they've struggled really to be uh, anyway you know, involved in the game from an attacking point of view. Well, as always, we'd love to hear from you, whether you're watching in Rahini, Ballyboden, Dublin, anywhere in Ireland, anywhere in the world. And Watching in the UK is Dan Reynolds. He says his little fella is hooked. Thank God for Dubs TV. A godsend. Are you glad to hear that, Coleman Goggins? You're a bit of a godsend yourself. Clearly he's hooked on what's going on here in the commentary <laughs> box and the, the action is secondary to all that, but great that they're tuning in. And yep. hopefully, um, while people can't be here, they are managing to, to log in, get to see the action. And it's great that you know all the quarterfinals have been available for people to see.
And we've got another one to come a little bit later on. Ballymun Kickhams against Nafina. That one throws in at uh, 4.30. This is the third of four quarterfinals. Bally Bowden in the driver's seat in this one. They don't know yet who they will be facing in the semi-finals should they get through the draw. Will be made live on Dubs TV after the second game today. Of course, yesterday St. Jude's beating Scary's Harps 117 to 110. And Kilmacut Croaks overcoming St. Vincent's 415 to 112. That one started like a train. I thought it was shaping up to be a classic, but then Kilmacut Croaks pulled away a bit in the end. Yeah, and Bally Bowden just looking to, to shift the forwards around a little bit. Donna McCabe has come in onto the 40 line there. Ross McGarry has come out centre forward. Oh, they've given it away and charging on as Ross McGarry. McGarry inside, it's opened up for him. Curls it over for the point. The first from play for Bally Bowden in the second half. It was a good score, but if I'm being overly critical, he had two players on the outside who had a free run. Yeah, absolutely. It was definitely another goal chance there for them, and I guess that's what they were looking for, the pass outside. McGarry did well. I think it's his first score. You know, pressure on Kieran Heaps from his goal kick out another one. It's intercepted by Ryan Basquell. Keeney's inside. Keeney will take it on. Instead, pops it off. A little bit miscued and rescued by Rutherson Real. They've tried to be too clever there. Well... At the risk of sounding like a hypocrite, I said the last time McGarry should have gone for goal. Maybe that time Keeney should have just popped it over. The great thing about being in the commentary box is you've never hit a wrong pass. Every shot you take goes over or under. And uh, it's the easiest game in the world up here, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, Certainly stuff happens a lot quicker on the field and we have a <laughs> chance to have a look back on it. But we'll still be critical of them, don't worry. Well, well, at least you were out there at one stage <laughs> of your life. I was never out there at this level. And I probably moved quicker up here than I did when I was out there rushing. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you still move quicker than me, so that's not all bad for you. Ryan Basquale, Connell Keeney. Ryan Basquale finds a gap. Can't keep it on frame though. Yeah, probably just looking for Kieran Heaps to, to slow down a touch. They've, they've given away a couple of kickouts. Bally Bowden have got the last couple of balls. So just take a little bit of the, the air out of Bally Bowden now. Make sure you get this kick out right. Just may try and keep possession from the kick out. I know that's a big ass. Bally Bowden are trying to squeeze across the field here. But they just need to kind of slow it down again. Bally Bowden are after getting a little bit of an impetus from a couple of you know kickouts that they've managed to win. Great decision from the goalie just to keep it short and try and retain possession for a few minutes. Well, they went from a position of trailing by one to now being down by five. So Rahini probably needed a goal at some point. 22 minutes gone in the second half. O'Kane runs onto it. Loses, regathers, has an option there in the shape of uh, Jack Carney. Now it's into the hands of Ben McHugh. Brian Fenton. Fenton strokes it over. Exquisite finish. Yeah, he, he um, I won't say it's a languid style because he has, you know, lots going on, but he, he never looks to be under pressure when he's taking a shot at goal. Always looks to create that space for himself and time to, to loft it over the bar. Great score from him. A little bit further forward that time that he was able to pick out a pass. Maybe the pass a little bit high or slow coming across him where there was half a chance for him to push pass for a goal. But an important score for Rahini. They've, they've probably gone, you know, over 15 minutes without a score or closer to 20 minutes without a score themselves. So important to get another score on it. Uh, but just not not getting enough of those despite the fact that they've owned a lot of possession across the second half. Thirteen plays nine when you make the conversion, the yellow card given to I think it's James O'Kane, that's who he seemed to be flashing it at. Gogan. Reels trying to get under it. Does really well. O'Kane. Had on Kyo inside, instead goes to Fenton. Real is making a run, Fenton spots him. Really good ball. And he wins the free and I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know who came looking for the big hit and Rutherson Real just managed to sidestep it and ended up then being caught with a trip. So it'll be interesting to see if it's yellow or black. I would imagine yellow, but if the referee deems it a trip, it could well be, be black, albeit it looked more yellow to me. You know, he's going claiming it's a trip. Yeah, I think he has. Oh, he's flashed a yellow. He had been booked previously, so it's a red card there for... So how big a turning well, point is that now? Yeah, well, it, it gives them a, a, an extra body. It gives them a little bit of advantage. Uh, certainly it was a, a trip. It was a yellow card, so it was the right decision from the referee to issue another one. He came out looking for a big hit. There was no need. If he had stood up, he would have been able to stop the play and probably stayed on the field. So look, last 10 minutes, it gives Rahini an opportunity with an extra player to, to maybe push forward an extra body. And I was a bit harsh on my original assessment of real they haven't scored the point they haven't punished them
but they do have that extra man now can they use it to their advantage yeah let off there really you should be looking to, to slot those over the bar someone uh, Bally Bowden player with a butter butter there I think it's Bobbitt maybe who's that's right it's Brian Bobbitt yep yeah okay will be disappointed with that you know you, you against any team you want to be kicking your freeze, but against Bally Bowden, when you have them on the rack a little bit, there's a huge opportunity there to narrow the gap down to a goal. The penalty is all that stands between the sides then, and he, he puts it wide on the wrong side, or well, the right side of the goal, I guess, in terms of taking the free, but really need to try and get a score from that. Still a four-point advantage to Bally Bowden. Stephen O'Connor has come on. Connell Keeney has gone off. Now, maybe he's injured, but if he isn't, that's a big, big call. Yeah, big call, but I guess they're looking for a little bit more fluidity in the forward line or trying to try something different. Fenton intercepts it. It's a risky one. Grenham gets there. Great mark. That's what it's there for. Yeah, great pass. Really clever stuff from Fenton. Back covered across the, the back line, I guess. Pops the ball into Grenham, and Grenham hopefully pops it over the bar. Does. Gap could be two. It's only down to three. You can sense that the Rahini dug out sideline are sensing that there's an opportunity here if they can get after Bally Bowden. They're going to have to work hard here over the final five minutes, Bally Bowden, to retain possession and take the wind out of Rahini sails. Five minutes plus because the water break was delayed. We're at 25, 38 now or so. Michael Dara McCauley did really well to guide the ball down to Kieran Kennedy. Ross McGarry. Kieran Kennedy's running inside, but instead he goes long. It was the right option because the Ballyboden forward got out in front. Now it's Kieran Kennedy. Falls for Ross McGarry. Ryan Basquell. Basquell continued his run, but instead it's a snapshot, which the keeper does very well under. Ballyboden yeah. effectively down to 13 at the moment because Colin Basquell is kind of struggling after that. Yeah, great pressure from Shotwell there. Got the block on, took the pace off the ball, and away come Rahini. Really growing in confidence in the last couple of minutes. Brian Howard. Kyo wants it, but Howard's, Howard keeps it. Grenham. Kearney. McMahon. Sent on by Ivory. Kyo. Ivory. was shaping for it but Darren Byrne went backwards instead of forwards now it's Owen Kyo oh, it's easy to say it from up here I know but that was the wrong option showed way too much of that to the yeah, defender wrong option there was no reason for him to go in there he could have kept it out held it out great work looking to try and organise the or orchestrate the turnover but Bally Bowden managed to hold on from the sideline but yeah he just could have recycled it come back on himself rather than trying to force the pass there you know Bally Bowden had everyone in behind the ball there trying to block up space uh, you know, pop it back out, retain possession. You might manage to create a chance. You know, 30 yards out from goal, force the pass, turns over, and just gives Bally Bowden a little bit of a breather. Obviously, we'll have analysis after this game. But if you want to get reaction from the winning camp, then check out at Dub GA Official in the hours after the game. We'll pop up some post-match interviews. Of course, more action to come here at half four. Also live on Dubs TV is Nafina against Ballymun Kickham's that has the potential to be a cracker. This one not a cracker, but certainly entertaining, intense. Kieran O'Reilly is off the bench for Ballyboden. By the way, here's Michael Dara McCauley. Good ball into the corner. Trying to get there for Ballyboden is Tom Hayes. He does get there. Shatwell trying to follow him. Lovely ball back inside for the new man. That's O'Reilly. Oh, again, you wonder was the wrong option taken. Sliding tackle from Sean Byrne gets it away. Nervy moments for the Valley Bowden fans watching on, including Emma Nelson, who's watching in Luxembourg. She's cheering on her brother Dara. What a player he is. Valley Bowden St. Enda's just playing a bit of keep ball. Dara Nelson. Emma will be happy with that pass he gave to Michael Dara McCauley. Ross McGarry has support. Gary inside, good ball, really good ball. If this goes over, it will be a huge score for Ballyboden, but drops well short. Tom Hayes with the effort. 
Yeah, he's been lively in that forward line for Bally Bowden. This is coming in, Tom Hayes. Showed a couple of times, won a few balls. and lucky there not to get a score, but Bally Bowden just managing to <laughs> steal back possession. Stephen O'Connor gets on the ball now, won the possession just a couple of seconds ago and kept Bally Bowden at that end of the field, which is where they want to be, Robbie McDade. Little tug of the arm there, but yeah, you don't often see Bally Bowden going backwards like that, you know, such is the pressure that Rahini have applied defensively for them. There, there's a nervousness around, do we just try and hold on to the ball and see this out, or do we push forward for another score? Uh, quite clearly, they're not sure what to do, albeit Robbie McDade is coming through. McDade. Hayes gets his pass away. Really important intervention. Rutherson Real. Brian Fenton. They have numbers here, Rahini. We're crossing into injury time. They probably still need a goal, Rahini, but they do have time. Howard has wrestled to the ground. Yeah. I think James Holland knew what he was doing there. Here's Grenham. And the three-point gap becomes a two-point gap. Yeah, I think that's one of those uh, cards you take for your team. You stop up momentum. I, I thought Grenham maybe could have taken on the ball there. There was a couple of extra bodies for Ahini. There was definitely a half chance of creating a goal. There's certainly time as we move into injury time maybe to get another couple of scores. But, you know, given how hard scores have been for both teams to come by, you know, have they two scores in them over the next couple of minutes? I'm not so sure. But certainly they're, they're giving themselves a lifeline, giving themselves an opportunity. And Bally Bowden really are across this second half have been quite ragged in terms of their, their setup and are giving Rahini every chance. Gogan, Michael Darren McCauley tries to get there. Howard gets up in the air. Grenham, Kyo, Real. Grenham. He's done well since coming in. Grenham! Oh, the goalkeeper had to push that one over. It's a one-point game. Three points for Grenham since coming in. Yeah, almost caught the goalkeeper off his line there. Gogan was backpedaling, managed to get a paw on it. Turned inside, back again. Did brilliant to push it onto the bar and over the over the crossbar. So it's only a point for Rahini, but a point game. You know, at, at after the penalty there, there was a five-point gap. You know, 46, 47 minutes into the game there, but Rahini have really dominated possession. Maybe not on the scoreboard, but they're surely giving them a chance now if they can get another score here. Fenton won the possession. O'Kane was fouled. Now it's shunted out to Jack Dalton. Sean McMahon, extra time and penalties if required, by the way. Kyo. Fenton. Fenton, going for the equaliser. If there's one man you'd want to take on a pressure moment, it's him, and that's why. Yeah, unbelievable from Rahini. Uh, was there three scores in the Mayas? There certainly is, three scores in three minutes. They've totally dominated possession in the second half. Really put the squeeze on Bally Bowden. Bally Bowden struggling to win their own kickouts. And uh, Benton Howard really dominating in the middle of the field. Big ball here to be won. Is there to be a winner within the 60 minutes? Kennedy. Bally Bowden ball. Yeah, Rahini disappointed because if you look at it, I think Fenton got the slap and it came off his tie and went over the line. So that's why Rahini felt it was their ball. Kennedy aiming it inside. It's broken down. Tom Hayes tries to get there. Collected by O'Reilly. Kennedy. McGarry. Bobbitt. Holland. Darren Nelson is free on that far side. Instead he goes short to Shane Clayton. Stephen O'Connor. Nelson assessing the options, yeah, well back to McDade. And if there was a story of, of the game, it's really what's playing out in front of us there. Rahini behind the ball, pressurising Bally Bowden, Bally, Boy Bally Bowden finding no space. They've everyone up, Shane Clayton is trying to contribute to the forward line here, but because of that lack of space and the press from Rahini, they've struggled to get their guys into the game. And if Rahini can orchestrate a turnover here, they've a chance, of, you know, if they can organise a, a turnover, a chance maybe to go up and grab a score at the other end. Bally Bowden down to 14, keep in mind McDade goes to ground. And it's a Bally Bowden free. Yeah, I'm not quite uh, what, quite sure what the referee's um, actions were. He was coming across there in terms of free. He didn't seem to point in the direction. Robbie McDade was certainly fouled. It's what about 30, 40 yards out from goal. Is there an opportunity off the for a free here for Bally Bowden to maybe steal a game that they 
ultimately have clung on to because Rahimi have been so good in the second half and how they've set up and particularly in those last you know five minutes where they've managed to get three scores to tie the game. Big kick. Ryan Basquell, probably the last kick. Interesting that they didn't bring Gogan up to strike it. Ryan Basquell, can he kick his team into the semi-finals? Not right now he can't, but we will probably have more chances to come because I think this is going to extra time. Yeah, certainly, unless the referee gives another minute here, we're heading for extra time, but, uh, uh, you know, that's the way Bally Bowden's forwards have been. Those chances that they generally knock over the bar, pulled well wide, a bad free. Is the referee looking to blow up here? Is he going to give Rahini a chance at one last kick out? The whistle is in the mouth, but he's yet to blow it. Rahini get the oh. possession all going to ground as Gian Ivers. He's unlucky. He'll go after it, but it's collected well. He's won it back. Is this the moment? Oh. oh, took the wrong option, but it might stay alive. The goalkeeper, Gogan, gets there, and we are going to extra time. Both teams had chances to win it in normal time, but we'll get at least 20 minutes more. Look, is there a better chance to win a game? Ivers managed to win the ball uh, back there. Give Rahini a chance of maybe stealing that game just with the last kick of the game. So he had done well to win it. You know, they have 20 minutes across extra time. Will Bally Bowden improve? They're just struggling to find that momentum. They'll certainly get a chance to catch a breather here and have a chat around how they've been set up. You know, what do Rahini need to do differently? Nothing really, because what they've been doing has been causing Bally Bowden problems. So the real opportunity for them is, can we push on and get those couple of scores? And generally what you find in, you know, extra time in these type of games, the scores are at a minimum. So the chance is there for, for both teams, certainly, but Rahini yeah. for a huge scalp. Well, given the nature of what's going on in the world, this game will go to extra time right now. There will not be a replay. So um, any conspiracy theories that accountants are telling referees to blow it up and we'll get another day out wouldn't stand up anyway because <laughs> there's no crowds in. But it is extra time. It is a one-off game. It will be penalties if required. Um, yeah, one score between them at half time, um, and then Ryan Basquell got the only score of the kind of the first half of the first second half, if that makes sense, uh, from the penalty spot. And at that stage, we thought even though they'd struggled to get scores, Bally Bowden might pull away, um, but but they didn't. Five consecutive points for Rahini in the last ten minutes or so, including three from Grenham. It looked like if anything they were in charge, but um, Bally Bowden did enough to to cling on in there and. Rahini got the equaliser late, but they couldn't find a, a leading point. Ryan Basquell had a chance from a free, but he pulled it well wide. So both teams have won and lost the game, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, well like 50 minutes on the clock, it's it's one ten to eight points. You're thinking this is Bally Bowden's, they're home and hoes, they'll get another couple of scores. Bowden have failed to score for the last 13, 14 yeah. minutes there. 1-1 one, one in the second half in, in its entirety for Bally Bowden. Yeah, it's just it's really struggled from an attacking point of view. And then, you know, Rahini, who had, you know, don't maybe have the same uh, calibre of forwards as Bally Bowden have, and that's you know not been disrespectful in terms of what Bally Bowden have achieved through the Pascals last year and into this year in the Championship. But they, they really set up defensively to try and uh, stop that. The second half proved that they were well able to do that. One, you know, one, one uh, puts a huge uh, blocker on that. But then they managed to get a couple of scores themselves. Would they have enough time to get three scores? I didn't think they would, given how hard it was for them to come at scores. But they did that score after score to then tie the game up. And while Ryan Basquel had a chance at the far end with a free from 40 yards out, when there was a turnover here in the last minute with Ivers, I thought that if he held on to the ball that the referee would have given him an opportunity to create something and he maybe just flashed a left foot at it and, and as the keeper comes out with it, he decides to blow up and go into extra time. So when you're standing looking out and you're wondering, you know, who's feeling the, the, the momentum is with them, it has to be Rahini thinking that there's an opportunity for them. Bally Bowden will probably be able to bring in someone to replace the player they lost and O'Donoghue yeah, through, extra, go back up to 15, through extra yeah. time so, so that numerical advantage is nullified but certainly from Rahini's point of view they're saying let, let's keep going it's hard now for Bally of Bowden to find that momentum it doesn't just switch on and switch off for you have to get into a groove with it and Rahini are, have been playing to their you know, level to their, their capacities their defensive formation has been working for them so they don't need to change a huge amount and if they can keep impacting on Bally Bowden then they give themselves huge opportunity to go on and win this game the coffee's gone cold at this stage, but it is needed. Rahini, I wonder what is being said there and how much players do take on board tactical instructions at this stage. Paul Dempsey, their manager, will no doubt be proud of what he's seen, but it would be a really big lost opportunity if they weren't to get the win now. Yeah, absolutely, because y y these opportunities don't come around all that often. You don't find that the, you know, the so-called bigger team has an off day, but when they do have an off day, that's when you're there and you have to capitalise on it. Rahini have sensed that. Rahini think there's an opportunity there. 
you know they're they're chasing three points with you know a couple of minutes left to play and they go after them the numerical advantage certainly helped them in that respect but they put pressure on Gogan's kick out they won a couple of kick outs Howard and Fenton were were instrumental in that period getting a couple of scores and also Sean Grennan who came in off the line and the three scores that he contributed in the second half you know that's the type of impact you want from a substitute so you know Rahini will be standing over there saying we're in good shape here guys we need to just stick to what we've been doing because Ballyboden aren't able to break the defensive line and from a Ballyboden point of view it's a case of you know looking inside and saying if we want to progress to a semi-final we, we need to step out of the malaise that we're in and have been in across the second half 1-1 one, one with only one point coming from play over 30 30 odd minutes you know that's not going to win your championship games and it's maybe unfortunate from Rahini's point of view that they weren't a little bit more consistent with some of those wides that they had in the first half I think maybe on the outside we obsessed with the big names on the two teams Fenton and Howard for Rahini Michael Dara McCauley and Ryan Basquale and Colin Basquale and of course Conal Keeney who's gone off for Ballyboden but Rutherson Real won a couple of important frees for Rahini towards the end of the game and made a key intervention with 60 minutes on the clock Sean Grenham went on to score a point from one of his three he's been immense and it's players like him who kind of have the winning in of this game in their hands yeah but uh, often what happens when you're looking at those you know, you're expect hoping your, your inter-county guys step forward but sometimes that doesn't happen because they're so well marshalled so you know Rutherson Real would have played you know uh, underage for Dublin teams Desi Farrell would have had previously involvement with him at, at minor squads so you know he's a guy with plenty of experience has played at top level so y y you know the fact that he's delivering out there is no surprise by any stretch of the imagination and when you're bringing a guy in off the bench all you want them is to give their best Grenham comes in kicks three scores and that gives huge uh, momentum to the team then because they're seeing that look we have guys on the line who are willing to come in and do a job for us so you know as Rahini drift into the first period of extra time here they're thinking look let's keep doing what we're doing and it's Bally Bowden who are now searching themselves for answers to the questions that they've just struggled to answer at the moment. Bally Bowden the four time winners up against Rahini who have never won it a little bit later on Ballymun who have won it three times up against Nafina who've won it five but Nafina have had a long long wait since their last title 2001 Bally Bowden looks like they've just pushed Robbie McDade into the half forward line here. So here we go, Conal 10 Keeney minutes aside. It's Conal Keeney back on the field as well. Looks like he's going to start this uh, first period of extra time as well. The sun is back out as well. After what has been just a horrific July and August weather wise at one stage I really did expect to see Noah in the arc the referee by the way is Liam O'Hearn Clark he's speaking to Sean Byrne and um, Ryan Basquel I think we had a, a coin toss there to decide we're going to do what we had set out to do which was play the way they're set up so <laughs> no harm in, in tossing the old yeah, coin all well the same he has to tick all the boxes just to confirm, Connell Keeney is back in for Ballyboden St. Enders. The man who defies age. Yeah, no Colin Baskell, he's off. It looks like he's strapped over on the far side there, maybe just across his knee. So maybe there's an injury there, certainly that has resulted in him leaving the field. Interesting half forward line for Ballyboden. Robbie McDade, uh, Ross McGarry, and Ryan Baskell is now out there as well. So the inside line will have Keeney at the fulcrum. Well, I'd never say something as silly as tactics have gone out the window because they never, ever do. But they can be hard to keep track of when there's so many switches made. I've no doubt though that Anthony Rainbow and Paul Dempsey on the other side have had these scenarios in their head and they know what they want to do with players should these scenarios happen. Yeah, well, well the big thing from a Rahidi point of view is they probably spoke about getting players behind the ball. So, you know, as I mentioned, getting players behind the ball is great. But if you're doing nothing behind the ball, it's a waste of time because teams are able to play through you but Rahini certainly haven't had that attitude it's <laughs> get players behind the ball you know the guys who are supposed to be doing the man marking jobs they've stuck to those and they have man marked but the other players have been getting hands on making sure that it hasn't been easy for players to pop passes through yesterday during the the, um, the St. Vincent's and Kilmacud Croaks game Vincent's dropped players behind the ball but it just allowed Kilmacud to play out in front and they were uh, popping these little passes in front of their full forward line Rahini haven't permitted that because of the fact that they've been aggressive in the tackle so they've, they've given themselves an opportunity in this extra time here to steal a really big scalp in the Dublin Championship and potentially move into a semi-final. And the question now is, can Bally Bowden find something within themselves? We know they have the, the ability, but they need to just stir that and find it. And they've struggled in that second half to do that. St. Jude's are there. Kilmacud Croaks are there. Who will join them, Bally Bowden or Rahini? 
Ballymun against Nafina, by the way, coming up a little bit later on here on Dubs TV. And after that, the draw for the semi final. The concentration right now, those who will be in that draw Brian Howard. Real. Joe. Howard. Cool as you like. Carney. Grenham. Carney. That's not a bad choice of player to pass to. Howard or Fenton. Kill. Oh, brilliant move by Joe. Will he go for goal? No. Ivers puts it over. Rahini lead. Yeah, great spot by Kill to, to identify the space. Turned on the Jets, drove through the middle. A couple of Ballyboden players chased him. Thought he was going to go himself. Pops it into Ivers. Ivers was maybe half considering a goal under pressure in terms of the Ballyboden defensive work. Pops it over the bar and Rahini lead. I think both Kyo and Ivers did the right thing there because there were so many bodies back. Now here's Robbie McDade. Holland goes to ground, keeps possession, intercepted by Dalton, squirts out and collected by David Byrne. Evades Grenham but not his teammate. Byrne. have an overlap if they want it Rahini Byrne takes oh. way too much out of that and then loses it in a rather silly manner here's Kennedy yeah totally caught in two minds there is what to do and hands the ball over to Bally Bowden where it looked like Rahini were in a good position to launch a counter trying to get under it for Bally Bowden is Tom Hayes he's collected Hayes well the goalkeeper made a good save but I don't think it's done yet yeah great ball in great fetch to, to turn on to it goalkeeper did well to smother the angle Stuck a foot and it blocked it out for a 45. You know, it just shows how the, the, the tiny margins, you know. Darren Byrne is travelling out with the ball. Looks like Rahini are, are growing in confidence. Turns over the ball. Bally Bowden create a chance and they almost steal a goal out of nothing. Those aren't fans behind the goal, by the way. That, that's the Ballymun kick of his squad, just in case you're wondering. Well, I'm sure they're fans, but they're also playing for Bally Bowden today. Ross McGarry will take on the 45. It doesn't look like he is going to go for it. Well, it didn't initially. It does now. Great kick. That Ross. is a wonderful yeah. kick by McGarry. Yeah, brilliant kick from Ross McGarry there because it, it did it certainly look like he had second thoughts or doubts in his mind whether he was going to find the distance for it. Uh, but, a, but a great score, an important one for Bally Bowden, really struggling to find scores up front. So anything that they can get is is critical to them, but great finish by McGarry, or great strike, I should say. Outside it went from Kearney. Ivers. Holland tracking him. He's trying to take it off the wing, but Holland is blocking him up. Really good work from James Holland. Yeah, great stuff defensively from Holland. You know, that's sucks a lot of energy out of you, you're feeling tired, you've played already a full game and you're being asked to work really hard to orchestrate a turnover but you know when you get a result like that you can hear the lift it gives to the team is Bally Bowden possession. Rahini run close during the week by Plunkett, you wonder will they have um, fatigue issues? Or will that have any effect on this game? Kennedy's ball is intercepted by McMahon. Kyo, McMahon, no one up top for McMahon, so he has to carry, Grenham, Kyo, McMahon's in front, but instead it goes to Grenham, who's looking for his fourth point, which he has got. Yeah, great stuff from Mahaney, uh, great, you know, sticking since the start of this extra time, Owen Kyo has got on a lot of ball, made a couple of brilliant decisions in terms of finding a guy with a pass, totally outnumbered and manages to win it. <laughs> One between them. Ball inside. Hayes the option again. Oh, it just bounces over him. Shatwell collects it. Or even better, just shepherds it out over the line. Yeah, great stuff from Grenham before that just to get the score. Great work from, from Kyo to again find the right pass. And then 
the way Grenon has been kicking the ball, he's the right man to get the ball to. Some days a guy is just on a blow. Grenon is certainly across that in the second half and early into extra time here, so if he's free, give him the pass. We'd love to hear from you on at dub GAA official. That's where you can find us on Twitter or Instagram. Ball pops up in the air and it falls down to a Ballyboden hand. That's Brian Bobbitt, Darren Nelson, Ross McGarry. Brian Basquale showed really well for it. Rutherson real bottles him up, but Basquale gets the shot away. And can't keep it on target under real pressure from Real. Yeah, not quite sure where he, where he turned back onto his right foot there. With clear chance on his left. You know, spun it back right. Rutherson and Real put a bit of pressure on him, kicks it wide. Rahini yelps delighted that they're struggling to get these scores. You know, real problems for them, Ballyboden up front. No momentum, no fluency in their forward line, struggling to find the scores and really suiting Rahini's tempo and, and play at the minute the way things are, are, are operating or happening out there at the moment. Ballyboden making another substitution. Farrell McGarry is in. And Ryan Basquale is going off. I would love to know what odds you would have got mm. if I told you both Basquale brothers would end up on the bench before the match ended. Yeah, a mistake from the goalkeeper. Ball caught inside the D there. Gives an opportunity for Michael Darren McCauley to do what he does best. You know, like scores are so much at a premium in extra time like that. You know, you've got to get everything right. You don't want to be handing over possession as easy as that. So big ball here to be won. Fenton well wins won. it. Well, I think that's one of the first times I've ever seen Michael Dara McCauley not win one of those balls and I think it's only Fenton who could beat him. Yeah, great win, really important and Fenton, you know, really stood up and made himself counted there to ensure that it was Rahini who held on to the ball. Sean Byrne. What a couple of matches he's had in the last week. Same as Sean McMahon. The two combine again. Pressure put on, they've got to go back to the goalkeeper. He stays really cool. And away he comes. Yep. He was heading for nosebleed territory there. Decided to check and pass the ball back. Great decision. Carney. Fenton. Kyo. O'Kane. O'Kane shadowed by Stephen O'Connor. Kyo. Howard wanted it in the centre. He was being followed by Colin Keeney. That's interesting. Rutherson real. What a surging run this is. Has to go outside because there was no options inside. If it's shot from a tight angle, it would be some score if it went over. But it's wide. Yeah, given you know th those type of scores, we haven't seen a huge amount of them guys you know out on an angle sending it over the bar. Big substitution for Bally Bowden and Deco Manny coming in. It's huge, uh, you know, adds a huge impetus around the middle of the field. Great guy to fetch a ball. So big call for Bally Bowden to bring him in to see if they can secure a bit of possession around the middle of the field. But, you know, in, in Ivers taking a shot on like that, it was a difficult angle. You know, if you recycle the ball, try and just make that angle a little bit easier for you. We haven't seen a huge amount of those scores kicked today by Rahini. So just simple, it, make it that little bit more simple for you before you take on those big shots. Clever bump by Dunham McCabe. Now he's got the ball in plenty of space. Leaves it off for Bobbitt. Michael Dara McCauley. Takes it on himself and sticks it over. Yeah, great score. First time we've really seen that uh, attack and trust. A couple of Rahini guys just being a stretch on their legs there where maybe Wednesday or their midweek game is catching up with them. Uh, but, you know, that was the first time we've seen the pace through the middle. Bobbitt take it on. Another player coming flying past to pick up at this time. It was McCauley who stuck it over the bar. Bally Bowden sneaked back onto a draw game. Fenton, safe hands. Sean Byrne. Sean McMahon. Howard. Kyo runs onto it almost. Oh, he was dispossessed by McDade. Nelson. Yeah, great work, Shane Clayton, and creates a little bit of space for Bally Bowden. They haven't had too much of this to play in in this game. 
Declan O'Mahony. Tom Hayes. Declan O'Mahony. Never afraid to throw himself on the line for a ball. And that's a wide. Yeah, around the corner, but first time, you know, Bally Bowden certainly have found that little bit of space. Great work by Shane Clayton coming out, got a hand on it. Robbie Bakday picked up the break. And then when he spun around, he put Declan O'Mahony away into space. Again, you know, you know Conal Keeney, often you'd see him knock those ones over, but Bally Bowden haven't been having that type of day today. And a drift wide, certainly early on in the game, you know, Keeney, a couple of fine scores, but since Bally Bowden, or since Rahini have managed to uh, influence the game with their defensive setup, Bally Bowden have really struggled from an attacking point of view. Well, if I was to take that scoreboard off the corner, you'd think Bally Bowden were well on top, but we are still all square. Fenton. Plowing on Fenton. He's tugged back there. Darren Nelson. He'll see a card here, Darren Nelson. Yeah, and, and potentially a black card because it did look like he dragged him to the ground. The way Fenton went down there certainly seemed to indicate that he hurt maybe the back of his calf or down his, his shin, certainly. So hopefully there's nothing too serious from a Rahini point of view for, for Brian Fenton. Uh, but I'd be surprised if it's not a black card because it certainly looked like more of a drag than a foul. Is it a trip or a pull down, I guess? Maybe just turned on his ankle as, as Darren Nelson fell down on, it, on him. He's having a chat with Robbie McDade. I'd love to know what they're saying. Yeah, well, it was probably the another player that came in. It was Nelson who brought him down. Yeah, but then after yeah. that, one of the Rahini players came in and just introduced himself to Darren Nelson. <laughs> and uh, Let's have another look. You just watch as Nelson stands over. Well, we didn't get to see it there, unfortunately. So he just kind of fell on the back of his yeah, heel. Probably yeah, probably just caught his ankle. Maybe a little twist on it. Fenton seems to be up and moving again. Yeah, why the replay was on there. Fenton was having a, a wee chat with uh, Donna McCabe, the num number 19 for uh, Bally Bowden. Yeah, certainly a big discussion between referee and linesman. He shortage. pulled him down, it's simple. It's well, a shout no shortage from the of opinion, <laughs> <laughs> certainly. No shortage of opinion from That's the Rahini side. Those opinions do come with caveats, <laughs> we should say. You often wouldn't get to hear that when we have a place full of supporters, so yeah. you know, great that we have a clear understanding of the way Rahini view it, certainly. So the referee, Liam Ahern clark is going to walk over after what has seemed like a very, very long delay. So this is the this is the, the third man in, so to speak. So he's going to look to speak to the Rahini player, I think, who, who oh no, he's picking out Darren Nelson. Sorry, I thought he was calling for one of the Rahini guys. So it would be surprised if it's not black. Which pretty much Yeah, deliver pull down black card. Puts Bally Bowden down to fourteen for the rest of the game yeah. because that's ten minutes in the bin. Yeah. Remember they ended uh, full time with fourteen, but obviously in I think he's probably gonna hop the ball as well because GA. of the bit that happened afterwards, so Rahini miss out maybe on the free just due to a bit of petulance. But certainly another, they have an advantage for 10 minutes. Michael Zahra McCauley just punts it away. So what do you tell the players in these kind of stoppages? Half time and extra time, everyone is tired. No one's kind of operating at full capacity. They're still giving it all. But is it now just a matter of who can stay standing? Yeah. Who can maybe create a bit of luck? Who can take the opportunity? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, look, I think from you know Rahini's point of view, they just continue to do what they've been doing, so I don't think anything has changed for them. I think from Bally Bowden's uh, point of view, you're, you're almost asking for something that hasn't been there for them in this uh, second half and through the first period of uh, extra time, which is, you know, it's, it's finding something within as opposed to sticking to any tried and ses tested system. Pure clearly what hasn't worked for them today is the tactics that they had set out to try and implement because of the way Rahini have set themselves up. So it's really coming down to guys, you know, finding something within them, you know, delivering or you know, getting onto the ball and creating something out of nothing. Because from a, a team point of view and certainly from an attacking point of view, I it's just not working for Bally Bowden. Well, Brian Fenton's second point of the game was the one that brought us into extra time. Sean Glennam helped by scoring three for Rahini after being introduced off the bench. Uh, Bally Bowden really struggling for scores in the second half. They only got 1-1. One, one. Uh, they haven't added too many since we got into extra time either. Um, 
Rahini took the lead for only the second time this afternoon via a point from Kean Ivers. Ross McGarry levelled it for Bally Bowden with a 45. Grenham scored his fourth to put Rahini back ahead by a point. But Michael Dara McCauley, talk about big players standing out up today. He scored uh, to make 112 to 15 points, and that is the score at the break in extra time. Yeah, like, you know, scary when you're looking at there's only a, a couple of scores can play over 40 plus, nearly 50 minutes for Bally Bowden. Uh, penalty uh, uh, free as well, uh, and then there was a 45, so they've really struggled just to to get a bit of fluency in their in their attack. Rahini will be delighted that, you know, they would have spoken about how they set up. They would have, you know, dreamt of having a situation whereby you're draw a game with 10 minutes left to play an extra time to try and seal a spot in a, a Dublin club semi-final uh, and how their system would work so effectively for them that you'd cause Bally Bowden so many problems you know it's not that Bally Bowden haven't come up against this type of challenge before and they've managed to come through it but just on given days stuff doesn't click you're struggling to just find that little bit of rhythm and momentum you spoke at the start of the game Ushin about Rahini playing a midweek game did that give them an advantage or was it uh, you know negative in terms of guys getting tired certainly look at out here it seems to be have given them a huge lift they managed to beat Plunkett's. They've moved on into this game. Huge underdogs. Ballyboden were red hot and, and virtually unbeatable from a, 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 a bookies perspective. But they've demonstrated a huge um, understanding of what they need to do to try and win the game and give themselves great opportunity with 10 minutes to play. 10 Assuming minutes. Assuming we don't go yes. into penalty kicks. Yes. Ten minutes to settle this one. Penalties if required. Rahini against Ballyboden St. Enders. If the second game lives up to the excitement of this one, we're in for quite a day of football. Ballymun against Nafina coming up later on Dubs TV. But right now we're watching Ballyboden search for a score. And Rahini's David Chatwell giving away a 45. Yeah, big win by Declan Mahoney in the middle of the field. I think that's probably the first ball Ballyboden have won there today from those throw-ins from the referee. Gets themselves an opportunity with 45. McGarry stuck one of these uh, in uh, the first half of extra time. So, you know, has the ability. Does he have the distance on it a second time around? Be a nice little start for Bally Bowden. We've mentioned how hard scores are to get an extra time. Guys are tired. You've been asked all the questions. Difficult to create those scoring opportunities because of that. So interesting to see what McGarry tries to do here. He's going to work it short. He was aiming for Michael Darren McCauley. It falls to Connell Keeney. Came to him more by accident than design, but he took full advantage. Yeah, certainly not one that you'd say came off uh, any training scheme that they had. It was a real, uh, I'm not sure who the pass was aimed at, to be quite honest. Miss McCauley, Keeney picked it up, spun on to his left, and having missed one in the first half of extra time, manages to stick that one over to give Bally Bowden a one-point lead. Just a reminder as well, Bally Bowden's end 14 men because Darren Nelson was black carded in the dying moments of injury time of the first half of extra time. Rutherson Real, Sean McMahon. Ross McGarry struggling there, uh, cramp. Well, let's hope he's okay to continue. Rahini through Grenham. Ivory, Kyo. McGarry is trying to shake it off. Brotherson real, dinked inside. That's a foul off the ball, surely it's a free in for Rahini. Yeah, just got a little bit too tight. Certainly a defender is looking to try and get a, you know, a fist or a hand in around the corner there, but just got too close, too tight. Uh, as a defender, as the forward slowed up and, and used his body to protect the ball that was coming his way, the defender ended up going through the back of him. You know, wins a free. Uh, a relatively simple free, you'd expect for Gavin Ivory to tap over. And moved in front of the goal, so certainly famous last words, unmissable. For Ivory, anyway. <laughs> Dean Rock among the group watching on. Well, I assume he's there somewhere, the Ballymun squad arriving for the second game. Ivory pops it over, and Rahini back level. Well, we had a penalty shootout live on TV for the very first time on Friday night, that in the Tyrone Championship. We might get one live on Dubs TV for the first time today. Ivers going backwards at a rate of knots. Michael Darren McCauley trying to dispossess him. Ivers wins it again and yeah. wins a free in. 
Yeah, and I think the, fail, the foul came from, from not Michael Darren McCauley, I think it was uh, Tom Hayes who, who gave away the free. McCauley was working hard, but it was Hayes who came in and gave the free away. But away with Rahimi. David Byrne was screaming for that one. Fenton shaking off his man, steaming on. Fenton has an option inside. He'll go himself. Fenton! Good save by the goalkeeper, and it's collected on the rebound by Bobbitt. Well, how big a moment is that? Yeah, you just wonder if the decision maybe was, was the wrong one. Certainly it opened up in front of him. You can see what's on his mind. He's thinking goal here and we win the game. But maybe pointing they would have won the game too. They've turned it over. Grenham. Oh, of, the of all the guys you'd expect to kick it over. He's been brilliant for Rahini uh, since coming onto the field. He kicks it wide. Two massive chances for Rahini. Certainly if, if Fenton sticks it over, Bally Bowden have to go up and get a score. Obviously the goal would almost certainly guarantee them the game, you think given how hard Bally Bowden have found it to get scores, but they come away with from two attacks with nothing, and Bowden still hanging on. I can only imagine the pain and tiredness these guys are feeling, so Fenton, under normal circumstances, probably would have guided that away from the goalkeeper, but had to shake off the defender, had to make the run, so by the time he took the shot, he was probably absolutely jaded. Yeah, and, and numbers were starting to you know, reach in around him as well, so it was more difficult in terms of space. Joe spills it, but into the path of Ivers. He's pickpocketed by work, Hayes. Tom Hayes. Brilliant work. Ryan Basquale. Keeney from an angle. Couldn't quite stroke it over. Yeah, it's, it's been one of those days. Uh, wide again. Bally Bowden managed to turn over, create a score and chance, kick a wide. They're not going to be a huge amount of them. You really want to take one of them, and, and uh, that then forces the other team to chase and then possibly yep. frees up a little bit of space. You know, as it sits, you know, man down, Bally Bowden are, are obviously there's a numerical advantage to Rahini. You, you wouldn't know it looking out there because of the way the pitch is and the bodies that are all around the place. But certainly the, the chance is there for Rahini. They're not announcing the substitutions over the PA for the obvious reason that there's no crowd here. They're also not holding up the sign. So I didn't notice that Ryan Basquell had come back in. What a fetch by Declan O'Mahony there. Puts pressure on Rahini again. Great take in the middle of the field. Robbie McDade. Five minutes to go. Keeney, Basquell, Barra McGarry takes it on. It's not a good one, though. No, wrong option. They, they've secured possession in the middle of the field. You, you know, can see Connell Keeney immediately just kind of doing the calm down yeah. motion. Yeah, but potentially a score wins this, Oshin. You know, it's hard for, for teams to get scores. Rohini have, have certainly had to dominate a possession across the second half, but both teams are struggling to find those scores. So potentially a score here at this stage wins the game for you. A point could be enough. So it's really about taking your time, getting the right guy on the ball, and then trying to land the score that could potentially win you the game. There's some pressure on Paddy Munn and Nafina to deliver a good game after seeing this one. Yeah, but um, Deco Mahoney Gale getting on the ball. He's been good since coming in there. Really experienced head on him. Clayton with an unusual but effective ball to bob it. Bobbitt goes a bit around the houses. Tom Hayes. Michael Dara McCauley. That's a really good ball. O'Reilly puts it over. Yeah, great score. Great bit of possession there. The right guys on the ball, forcing the pass uh, and creating the scoring opportunity. You know, need a kick out here. Rahini, they've struggled there. Declan O'Mahony has won the last couple of balls there. Despite being a man up, they can't seem to find that spare player or the, the extra man that they have. You know, Bally Bowden managing to force here. If Bally Bowden at the moment have the lead, if it ends all square at the end of this period of extra time, we are going to penalties. But O'Reilly does his best to make sure that doesn't happen. He's tugged back by Byrne. It's a free in. Yeah, what a hit from, from Colonel Keeney that came just before that. Spun Byrne backwards, managed to get the turnover. I, I'd say Sean Byrne could see a black card here. He, he seemed to pull him to the ground. Uh, look at Colonel Keeney, you can see what it means, the possession, how critical it is at this stage of the game. They've, they've managed to find something within them, a bit of reserve. Let's see what the referee says to Sean Byrne here. It was just before you know, the foul there that Colonel Keeney hit Sean Byrne and shook him backwards and managed to spin the ball, knock the ball out of his hands. You know, he's a long time on the go, Conal Keeney, a lot of strength in that tackle and, and really it was a big, big hit and a black card for Byrne. And that's effectively him sent off because I can't imagine there'll be that much injury time that he'll see any more game time here today. Yeah, he was unlucky because he, he got hit on, on two fronts. You know, there was a heavy tackle as he turned back around, Conal Keeney came and met him. Big kick for Ryan Basquale, hasn't been 
uh, overly accurate from place balls. They haven't had a huge amount of them, to be honest. But uh, look, two points gap, a couple of minutes to play. It's a big ask for Rahini to try and close that again. Here's Ryan Basquale from a comfortable position for a player of his talent. And it's being brought in. Well, that's a comfortable position for a player of any talent. Yeah, not quite sure what was uh, what was obviously said, but the referee didn't take too kindly to it. And you'd expect Basquale to tag this on. Not only is he hopefully, well, from a Valley Bowden point of view, hopefully squeezing out the gap to two points, but bit by bit the clock has been in as he takes his time and knocking it over the bar as well. So the time is against Rahini as well as that scoreline extending out past with just a one-point margin. Pasquale does what was expected and puts it over and puts his team two points in front with just over a minute to go, plus injury time. Oh, lost again. O'Reilly. But it was handled on the ground, I think, is what the referee is saying, and Rahini have a lifeline. Yeah, but a bit of experience from Ballyboden. They put real pressure on the kick out there, working really hard despite being... Uh, you know, having been the man down and having everyone to work that little bit harder, I know it's level numbers now, but look at the press they have there. They realise they've opportunity to turn Bowden over or Rahini over. Great ball from Shatwell to Fenton. Grenham, who's on four points. Oh, behind Kyo. Oh, Mahoney. Yeah, it's keep ball now for Bally Bowden. There's no other score needed, so hold on to the ball and you see out the game, a game that you, you know, have really struggled to put past Rahini but it's keep ball and when Tom Hayes got that ball before giving it off to Ryan Basquale there was not one blue and white jersey in the Rahini half no it, you look it's keep ball there's no there's no requirement for another score for Ballyboden you don't want to give the ball away because then Rahini need a goal and that then wins them the game so you know from Ballyboden's point of view just keep it but there's a bit of space now O'Reilly O'Reilly surely to seal it off the woodwork comes back to O'Reilly and that is it sealed Oh, that's a heartbreak for Rahini. It really is. Uh, they've been so, so good across the, the game, particularly first half of extra time. Maybe this second half of extra time is just asked a little bit of them, given they had a game in the middle of the week. But a 1-2 with the, the upright and buries it into the net. Game over, albeit that the probably game was gone, given the two-point advantage that Ballyboden had from the couple of scores they got. Goals win matches. Ballyboden have got two of them. One from a penalty, one from Kieran O'Reilly brilliantly following in the ball you have to give him credit because a lot of players take their shot and nearly turn away but he followed it in yeah we'll be seeing that yesterday with Kevin McMenamin and the wonder goal that he got he traveled you know 60 70 yards keeper made a great save but he followed the ball as it popped up into the area and buried it into the net so similarly there he followed the ball got the goal and it's uh, Bowden who, who move into round four with plenty of work to be done and huge opportunity for other teams looking to say you know we have ways of stifling this Bally Bowden team well, Rahini's wait for a Dublin senior football title will go on for Ballyboden St. Enders. They are the defending champions and they've showed the determination of champions today. Keeney in plenty of space. Will he run it in and go for goal? Keeney against Heaps takes his point. Yeah, what a pass from Michael Darren McCauley, but it, it, it's just legs gone on Rahini there. They've put so much into this. They've worked so, so hard. They had it really tight. The two-point advantage, that, you know, there's still half a chance. The fact that Ballyboden had secured possession and then they get the goal. Ultimately, they were, they were gone on the two-point deficit and then once the goal hit, it was game over. It's a scoreline that is harsh on Rahini. They lose out 216 to 16 points. Uh, we will talk an awful lot about Ballyboden because they march on to the semi-finals. But first, a word about Rahini, who can take much credit from this game. Yeah, like... You know, maybe the opportunity was there in normal time in terms of uh, the last chance that fell Ivor's way where he, he just was maybe just threw a boot at it rather than just securing possession. But, you know, from, you know, start to finish pretty much what Rahini managed to do was implement their game plan, which was to stifle that Ballyboden attack, which they did ferociously well for, you know, almost 40, 50 minutes because Ballyboden only managed to score, you know, a goal and uh, I think it was three points across that second half and then the first half of extra time. And Rahini really were in ascendancy. Ballyboden were struggling. They'd taken off Ryan Baskell, Colin Baskell, Conal Keeney had left the field. You know, there was a huge opportunity for them. There was a second run of extra time. I mentioned, you know, what is it that, that a manager says heading into the last period of extra time that turns a game for you? Well, it was really a case of do you want these guys or do you not? There was no tactic going to be set up that was going to win the game. It was ultimately the experience, the know-how that Ballyboden have gained over the last number of years that probably seen out that game. Absolutely, Rahini would have been jaded at that point given that they had played midweek and had played so well and worked so hard across that but a, a massive performance from Rahini and really unlucky to lose out as they have done 
uh, and it was you know that run across this last period of extra time uh, where Bally Bowden just seen out the game but a huge effort from them and Bally Bowden will leave today relieved uh, will leave today relieved that they're into a, a club semi-final because at large portions there it looked like Brahini were going to steal a big big scalp and these the moments from the game that uh, Bally Bowden took advantage of to, to see at home of course Rahini gave it plenty as well and uh, when Ivory stuck that over we didn't know what way it was going to go in the second period of extra time this is another key yeah. moment there have been so many today yeah you called it out uh, Shane Clayton came across him there was a couple of guys pulling out of him as well and it just went straight at the goalkeeper you know and Brian Fenton probably realised himself the huge opportunity that had missed you, know, you flip that around it's a tie game with only a four minutes left to play they open up a one point lead they win the next kick out as it, as it comes out and a free is won by Ryan Baskell and suddenly you're, you're two points up with a couple of minutes to play and I think at that point Rahini were probably sensing that you know their their number was up albeit that if they could have got s secure possession there was every chance that they might have got a score Brenham had missed a chance prior to that that might have given them an opportunity but you know this guy forcing it to pick up a break off the upright and then sticks it into the net and that's bang on 10 minutes of extra time and they suddenly Bally Bowden are out the gap and you know turns into from a you know from what a, a delicious a ball that is yeah outstanding and Keeney look you know, could have gone for goal, decides, no, we just pop it over the bar, it's game over at this point anyway, and Bally Bowden see it out, and you see 2-16 to 16, you think that was the result everyone was expecting, but the story of the game, you know, the, the scoreline certainly doesn't capture that, Rahini were well merited to be as close as they were, and will be very, very disappointed that there was an opportunity to get to a, a Dublin club semi-final that has just passed them by, and, and Bally Bowden's know-how in the end sees it out. It does indeed, Bally Bowden go into the draw for the semi-finals that will be made live on Dubs TV after the next game, which is the FINA against Bally, Munn, Kickhams, already in that draw, Kilmacud, Croaks and St. Jude's. We'll also, by the way, have the draw for the Senior B semi-final. That's coming up after Bally, Munn against the FINA. Let's hope it's as exciting as the game we've just witnessed. Bally, Bowden, St. Enders, the defending champions uh, winning. After extra time, Bally, Bowden, St. Enders, 216, Rahini, 16 points, the final score. We'll be back shortly with the second game, so stay with us for the afternoon here on Dubs TV.